What's up, everybody? West Smith, Ver- West, Smith, West Smith Variety Show episode. Do you know what episode we're on? 80. 80. Yeah. <laughs> Did I get that right? Is it on the sign? Did no. Look? <laughs> I peaked earlier and uh, I saw the Myron Eugene number yeah. 80, which, I mean, we're off to an amazing start that I remembered. Something yeah, you're like not that. 80. So I'm not 80. This is awesome. <laughs> we're, 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 uh, we're both struggling with memory retention oh here, right? And Just so a little bit. That's awesome. With okay, so episode eighty with Myron Eugene, yes, sir. Otherwise known as me and his friends. Me and my friends, <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, man. Uh, a couple quick shout outs, real quick. Uh, sure. I had uh, uh, this weekend. We had our juice night out party in San Francisco. Oh, nice. Tons of fun. Uh, nice turnout. Thanks to anybody, everybody who came out there, and uh, and especially those that uh, modeled our little juice night out sunglasses for us. Oh, Check nice. The, a yeah. pair for you, my I friend. I appreciate that. The convertible glasses. They Wait. fold up. Oh. Sweet for beach pockets, <laughs> oh, right? Yeah. Even the middle folds. No way. Check that jam out. I'm going hiking and camping next week, so these are going to be... <laughs> for anyone that did not get their pair. I'm going to be... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to uh, have a suit by falls and, uh, for the first time, so these are going to be my uh, hiking shades. Awesome, man. Nice. So uh, that party was with, um, it was at Monarch. I don't know if you've ever been to Monarch. I San do. Francisco. Yeah. Killer yeah. little sound system in the basement. Yeah, I the played basement. there. Nice. Monarch. Was it Monarch? Yeah. In the Rave Cave. No, I'm thinking of Great Northern. Sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, same people. Same people, both, I think. yeah. I'm friends yeah. with Micah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cool. Hey, Micah. The world gets super small <laughs> right. super quick, does it It not? doesn't take long, does it? Uh, yeah, so my good pal and party cohort, uh, Jenny Shu, who's DJ Shuey. Okay. She, does, she helps me put these parties together. Nice. Um, most of the ones we do. And um, as juice, whatever. And uh, yeah, so that one was cool. We also had DJ Denise. Um, uh, I didn't know her. Shuey kind of helped, you know, curate the local talent. Right. And uh, like a veteran, you know, 
DJ there in San Francisco. Oh, nice. So good, man. Like that's awesome. Yeah, it was, isn't that it was, cool? It's it's always really nice to to uh, you know just be doing a party and and then and like you don't know a lot about maybe all the rest of the people on the lineup and right. it's just great. And then you're kind of blowing away. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, super pumped. And her homies came out to support and um, Hella Cat, uh, kind of up and coming, a little bit more up and coming DJ came out okay. and um, opened up for us. Did a great job, and then uh, awesome. Shuey, then myself. Then after that was this guy, uh, the Rhino, from uh, a lot of these are from Burning Man camps. Okay. You know, he's right from on. a camp called the Golden Gate uh, Project, I think it's called. Hmm. They have like a, they have a basically a, a float of the Golden Gate Bridge. That's, That's their art card, dude. That's yeah. great. Yeah, man. You ever been fun. to Burning Man? I have. Oh, I have. so you know what's up with yeah. the whole, yeah. the whole debauchery. Oh yeah. Um, I think my first year was oh four or oh five. Oh, right on. And then, um, but I haven't been back in a while, like I think 13 or, f oh, my dates are fuzzy, 13 or 14 May was my last year. I haven't been back since. All right. So I keep But you know the whole art car, sound car, oh, yeah. like all that stuff, yeah. you know what, you know what's up. So, um, but yeah, so like Shuey's from Space Cowboys, you probably right. remember them. And, For sure. Uh, and then... Uh, uh, let's see, Helicat is from, uh, I think, the Janky Barge, which is just one of the funniest art cars <laughs> I, ever. Just, I've heard of that. It's a bus. It's just, it's literally janky. <laughs> Intentionally janky. That's it's great. Awesome. That's great. Killer sound system on top, though, as usual. Yeah. But, um, I think it's like a double-decker bus, or they turned it into one. Who That's, knows? Dude, the level of creativity out there and with art cars is just, Yeah. it's, it's pretty phenomenal. It's but amazing. to have somebody... You know, when people are going all out to do these amazing creative yeah. things and then have somebody do something janky, that's ah, cool. just <laughs> cool, that's a lot of awesomeness in yeah. that, too. And it leaves them a lot of freedom for it to just, like, <laughs> you can't get on that and then complain. No. It's like, no. bro, like, you, exactly. do, like you, you did read the, right? the, the thing that says janky. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. And um, that's the that's the second one we've done there is Juice Night Out. We've done, like, awesome. five parties there in San Francisco. That's great. But that's the second one with kind of the... The different and, uh, and party names. Is it breakbeats? No, no, it's uh, it's about. I would say this one was probably like you know sixty forty house and breaks. Okay. Yeah, fun. So, and uh, it's nice to have that freedom to kind of mix things up. And, yeah, and no one's not. No one's quite sure what to expect from us. <laughs> That's great. You know, between that range, That's so it's kind of cool. I even play a little glitch hop and nice. I'll drop a little hip hop song or two in there. And Good. Like that. Thank you for um, fun. You know, Keep I won't tell people I'll play a like right. dubstep ish sounding song, but I'll get it in there. <laughs> right, nice. Yeah, you know, before they know it, they're the dancing to dubstep need, or drumming yeah, bass. Yeah, the kids need a little glitch in their matrix. You gotta have it, man. You gotta yeah, have it. Absolutely. Which, by the way, all those mixes uh, will be up. Uh, well, it'll be in a couple different places, but, um, you know, westsmith.com, there'll be a post that shows them all there with all that stuff. It's nice. cool, man. Nice. That was kind of that thing. Right. I don't know what you do this weekend. Uh, this weekend, what did I do? I had the most mellow weekend ever. I, uh, I think Saturday night was my big night and I, I was in bed by like 1030, but I did eat two snickerdoodles. <laughs> so it got kind of <laughs> crazy at my house. That's insane. Uh, yeah. Snickerdoodles so on a Saturday big, or Friday? I, it was a Saturday. I, I, Saturday night's my big night. And then, um... And then Sunday I played, I did play at the, uh, the local, uh, what's it called? Pendry Hotel Pool House. Okay. Um, it's Where's a pool that? party. It's a new super swanky uh, hotel downtown on J. I uh, believe it's okay. like 6 and J. Somewhere gas Or maybe it's 8, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, they got a really cool pool and a really, it's uh, on the fourth floor, I believe, and a really good vibe up there. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Played up there, just played a bunch of house and some old school like funk and soul and nice. You know, had fun playing with a couple of my buddies. So I saw you got a when I was digging through uh, getting those sweet pictures that I'm gonna bring up here. <laughs> <man. I> can't <laughs> wait for that. <laughs> I saw I saw um, that you had a uh, you know you uh, well I've seen around anyway just following your social media. You play a lot of parties, man. You got a lot of different things going on. So. Yeah, I, I, I have over the. Over the years that I, I've been DJing, I've definitely played all kinds of parties and clubs and raves and some underground stuff and out in the desert stuff and played at Burning Man. I was gonna say you had to if you end, if you end up playing at Burning Man, you're you're uh, 
you're, it's either your last gig or it's like, you know, maybe intentionally or, or it kind of catapults you into a different it, it, mind space. It, right? it does. Absolutely. Every time I've played there, which has been several times, it's been, you know, so much fun and unique and a couple of interesting challenges. Um, um, you know, you know how it is with oh, uh, yeah. the, the storms. And one time we just all literally had to hunker down for like 10 minutes and well, okay, wow, that wasn't that bad. That was quick. Get up, go. I'm playing a song. And then all of a sudden, the other CDJ, and this is a while ago, I was playing CDs. Like, it literally, like, slowly pushes out the CD and just starts <laughs> flicking and it goes dead. Some, we're all just standing oh, there. Oh, like the, just, like, some sort of electromagnetic yeah, just situation from, yeah, going on? Yeah, the whole, the whole, uh, Playa Dust storm. Right. And, uh, so there was no mixing or anything and there's no wing this is just cds you know so you just hit forward yeah on describe button. so post vinyl but still cd where you actually still had to CDs, rely on it yeah but describe like for someone who's never been um describe for somebody what like going from no dust storm to dust storm is like Dude, out it's there. apocalyptic i mean it's just <laughs> a good you, one yeah it's a good yeah. one like you go from like oh it's a beautiful day and then all of a sudden the wind starts coming up and you, so a lot of times you can actually watch it coming towards you or figure out that it is. In this case, we, we were not really doing much watching. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, all of a sudden you just get the first of it and it's, uh, it, it's, it's, I'll try my best, but it's like being in a white out, yeah. you know, for the skiers and boarders out there. And uh, I mean, I've had oh, it where yeah. you can't see, you know, the hand in front of your face. It's just thick and, you know, I remember the first, before I went, the first time, and, uh, and I was going with some friends in Orange County, like, hey, bring your goggles, bring your ski goggles, and I'm like, uh, and they, you know, I, the, the social media wasn't a big thing the, back then, so I went on the actual website and, and, and looked. The actual the website. Yeah. <laughs> For anybody, that's like, that, that was like the phase after fax machines, was websites. <laughs> it was right the hey, height I of, one I love. Yeah, the height of the dot-com bubble, no, I don't know. But yeah, and I'm like, oh, wow, these pictures, well, that's an interesting, that's a cool fashion choice. And then yeah. you realize it's function and not just fashion. And yeah, you, oh, just, yeah, when you, you, yeah, you can't see when, the, when it's a wide yeah. out and you just, I mean, you, you literally hunker down. That's what you do. You cover up as best you can and hunker down. And yeah, that one. And like, it was the craziest thing. Somebody, it, it passed and we're trying to play again and somebody... <laughs> ran into their RV or whatever and pulled out a, gla a thing of Windex and came out and I'm like, okay, <laughs> Windex and l literally sprayed it down and just on the wiped CDJs? on the CDJ wow. and went down, <laughs> plugged it back in and it just worked perfectly the rest of the day. I was like, yeah, oh. those but, things, I don't know how they fare out there. I think, I think, uh, I think several of the camps I know, like Dusty Rhino, ones that have everything pretty exposed not like inside a bus or inside some sort right. of shelterish yeah, no looking people. thing like top of the car or whatever um i think they pretty much take those things to like a service shop the mixer and the cdjs and basically just start drop it off yeah. and say hey just take it apart do your best yeah de-burning man it and, and give it back to us <laughs> been, a couple hundred bucks i guess been flyified yeah yeah because they'll just lock up yeah. for sure no, I think people have also gotten much more adept. I've seen some pictures in my last year of playing there. You know, people had actually built, you know, things with flaps that would go over it. So when the storm comes up, they can just kind of lock it up and oh, try yeah. and cover it. Run but cover. yeah, this was like oh, Put the song on yeah, loop. <laughs> nine or something. And <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it was like really old school C uh, CDJs. So yeah, that was uh, that was a fun little event. Yeah. And uh, that's awesome, man. No, that's I, I like to call like for me the best for frame of reference from maybe the last five or ten years, whatever was that last uh, that last Mad Max movie. Yeah, where that you know crazy CGI scene with the big yeah. dust cloud coming. Yeah, it's not far off. No, I have a I have a trailer vintage like uh, Airstream trailer that I took out there a few years, like f I guess four of the five years that I went, and then I la after last year I stopped taking it because I wanted to actually like live in it a little bit more right. you know and fix a bunch of stuff and just kind of not go back out there with it so the guy actually right now it's at the 
the this guy Tommy's custom trailer here in San Diego. Oh, nice. Does work on like vintage trailers. Right. So I had cleaned it twice myself after the last burn, and then I did some camping stuff. It was fine for me, but I took it to him because he's done all like the Reno work and stuff. Oh, on interesting. The, on the batteries and solar yeah. and the more like technical stuff. And um, so he's like, uh, so I took it in to basically like get get a full like kind of overhaul, make sure everything's working right, blah blah blah. And like told him, you know, hey, I'm not taking it back out there, you know, whatever, because he knew I took it out there the other times and helped me do some things to try to, you know, like you said, these right. lessons learned to protect it, and when the <laughs> shit comes, you can batten it down. Yeah. And so that worked pretty good. But then I, I had to go back like a week after I dropped it off, and I was talking to him about some stuff. He's like, man. He's like, we've cleaned some places, you know, three, four times, and that dust just keeps falling out of wherever. <laughs> it's otherworldly. And he's like, it? what is that stuff? Like, yeah, you know, it's like really fine. Yeah. Yeah. And no, it, it looks like, I don't know, I tell people who have never been, it looks like you've landed on the surface of the moon, you know? Yeah. And that dust is, I mean, it, it seems like it's otherworldly. And then if it gets wet... <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, God. that's a whole yeah. other story. Yeah, but the stuff is like it's like from you know it's like from disturbing that lake bed, right? Which I assume is some sort of really fine. Well, it's got to be parts organic and all kinds of shit. Yeah, right? I mean, like supposedly that lake's been dried up, you know, for however many, you know, I think a couple thousand years. I, I think it feels. I think it gets water on it though every year. It, it does, but I don't think it. Ho- obviously, it doesn't hold it permanently. Sure. It just it, it just evaporates so quickly, but. Uh, yeah, it's just, uh, I don't know, it's a combination of, of I guess, dirt and sedim, uh, sedim, sediment and all kinds of... <laughs> burners. <laughs> burners, yeah. Uh, apathy, disgust. <laughs> it's a bunch of weird adjectives. Consent. All. Yeah, <laughs> some consent. Yeah. There's a lot of consent out there. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, that stuff is is, is gnarly. Um, I took my RV, I don't have it anymore, but I took it out there one time and I was just like... Oh boy, this the cleaning on that was yeah, was that's insane. A that's I, I'm a RV nerd. Like I nerd out and I'll get on Craigslist, um, which is also a website. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> Craigslist dot org Craig, is it still dot org? <laughs> I think it's still dot org. Go, I don't know. I'm gonna go look, dude. I and, uh, it's still I'll just org. look at like used RVs because I want to buy another one, but. Dude, the uh, the the new different smaller models they have of the of uh, the airstreams are, are pretty intriguing as well, and now you can actually go on and uh, oh, like the base camp one, or th- like there's it a looks couple. a bit like a, a horseshoe almost. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It's yeah. not quite the rounded classic. Exactly. It's a little more like a and like then, a horseshoeish looking thing. Yeah, and then they have one that's actually not or seahorse. Sorry, yeah, like a seahorse kind of profile yeah and then they actually have one that's not their normal like silver whatever lining it's actually got a little bit of a different so they have a couple of different ones and you can now choose your uh a couple different floor plans oh nice and uh yeah they've got like two or three smaller ones that are under 60 grand or yeah under, they're yeah. not inexpensive but then i mean none of the other trailers are yeah. really inexpensive either yeah. i think the bottom of the when i was i was talking to someone recently about them buying a new um one of the kind of i guess more uh, it's kind of corrugated, you know, metal mm-hmm. ones, yeah. a, a little bit lower cost prof- profile there. And even those were in the 30 range, I think, new. Yeah. So Well, and the Airstreams are one of the yeah. only things that, I mean, they hold their resale value pretty well. Certainly more than others. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. when they get as old as mine, it, people are like 52. You? What? Wow. <laughs> and you, how many burns did it make? Five. Five? Sorry, wow. it made it to four, and then I, and then I yeah, it made it to and four, four, and then and I the, canceled you it You retired out. it? Yeah. Dude, and dude. it didn't get like it nothing ever really happened to it. I think I think actually the last trip either either out there I did go through some pretty good storms, you know, rain, lightning, so I don't know if yeah, I don't know when it happened, but uh part of the reason I had to take it down to get some reno work done on the batteries and electrical was because the charge the solar something between the solar panels and the like charge controller and the batteries you know, there's some regulation that goes right. on there or something ain't working anymore. <laughs> so, and it's not normal for something right. like that to just die, like, yeah. within, say, three or four years of when we put it in. I got you. All working fine. Like, it's solid state stuff. It's like, yeah. it's like, it's like if a CDJ just sitting in your right. studio died. Just stop. That'd yeah, be there's weird. There's got to be a reason, you know? yeah. So, uh, yeah, anyway, all the batteries were fried. So we think maybe just something, you know, went the wrong direction electrically. Yeah. yeah. Could be a lot so maybe things. from out there, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> when uh, when was the first time you went out? Uh, was it oh four oh five I believe, yeah, and uh, I, I want to go back. I want to go back, but uh, 
I don't know. It's just it's gotten weird since it be, for me personally yeah. since it became. Um, and I don't want to be jaded and the old man yelling at kids. Well, I kind of do, but it just became we, weird. We, we do that here sometimes. Yeah, it just became <laughs> weird when it just became like a. It seems like it's like a photo shoot and a place to be seen, and um, and I have never ever looked at looked at it as you know a music festival or even a chance to really go and like either like DJ and wow people. I've always looked at it as like this is a crazy life experience with a lot of amazing art and all kinds of weird you know classes I can go sit on sit in on and uh, just all these kind of you know amazing things that you can't do in everyday life right which I can go see a DJ or DJ myself almost at any sure. time and granted it especially with this awesome music scene we have here right that eventually we'll talk about <laughs> <laughs> eventually we'll get to it. after an hour of other shit <laughs> uh, that you know that there's just so much there to do it and so like it's been interesting to to me to to, to watch the evolution or de-evolution of it and um yeah but and then sometimes i talk to some people I'm like well did you go over like this side and i realize a lot of people are just basically and this might not make sense for the the non-burners but they you know they pretty much spend 95 percent of their time between six o'clock and ten o'clock at these giant sound oh camps. yeah yeah and i'm like dude or girls like there's so much other awesome yeah. weird bizarre yeah. fun things that you can go and do and see that you can't do and that's a great the, piece the of default advice life you know and i was like, like hey yeah. get out of there and like I mean, do do all the sound stuff too. Yeah, yeah, you take some plenty time, of time, sure, yeah, to, to, to do that. And get um, lost in the weirdness yes, over there. Yes, that's what you. Yeah, I think uh, I've I've had some thoughts, you know, to myself, circular thoughts about how it how it changed to me over the five times right. I went, and those were five years consecutive, right? So, um, what was your and, first and year? All, well, last year was the okay, last time so, I went, yeah. and so just five consecutive. Gotcha. Yeah, so more recent than yeah. yours. I think what happens, at least kind of where I've arrived, is mm -hmm. like, and because I probably won't go this year, um, um, I, I say it's because I have other things that I'm interested in doing, which I right. do, like some Baja racing stuff. We can maybe talk if you want. But, um, but, but the reality is I sort of got involved in those things over the last couple of years. And then I've sort of, you know, kind of willed those to happen yeah. in place of that, or just ah, something else to do. And it's more interesting to me right now. I think, you know, like for me, I think what happened was it's like, I think whoever you are and you're into music, probably if you're going to go there, you're probably into music. True. That's probably what got you even to know about it you yeah. know, in many cases, I think. Um, no, that's very yeah, true. And, then, and then it's like you go and it's super awesome and maybe you have a good streak. And for some people, it gets worse and they just stop. Because right. maybe it's just simply not worth the money to them or whatever. Yeah. And then other people, um, it continues to get better, yeah. which it did for me. Same All the way up to the fifth, you know. Yeah. And Same then I here. kind of like, aside from getting interested in the stuff, I was just like, you know what? Man, that last year was awesome. Yeah. I don't think I need to go back. Right. Right you now. You don't need to try and, you know, top it or chase that high. Yeah. And I've yeah. got great friends that haven't yeah. been, yeah. that want to go someday. You know, they can't go like this year right. or whatever. So um, I'm like, I think maybe I'll. You know, you just off. spin out, and maybe the yeah. next time I go will be to take people that haven't been. That's great, and be their, you know, a uh, bit of a guy sounding board, if you yeah. will, right? Like, um, to to just have a good time. Yeah, you know, because I think because that's something I haven't really done. I mean, of course, you go, and the next year you're there, you always run into people that, right? You know, you guide them if they're really screwing up, good or bad, or yeah. missing out on something, right? But I haven't been where it was deliberately like. Helping someone figure yeah. out the tickets and yeah. keeping them oh, calm. You got your, <laughs> <laughs> you got your maybe time introducing coming, them yeah. to some camps yeah. to make the path. Yeah. You know this kind of stuff. Absolutely, right? yeah. And that would be a different experience for me in that way. For so sure. maybe that'll be cool when I yeah. if I decide to do it again. Well, I think I've only been five times total because I would always take a year or two years off. I think I only ever went consecutively twice. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's it's great taking you know a year or two off. Um, yeah, good to hear. Yeah, because yeah. you know you know how it goes too. You get that well, FOMO. maybe not. Did you did you if you go? Well, you do, and I think the worst like the more years you go consecutively, then the more it becomes this thing like you can't not go. 
<laughs> and I'm like, yeah. five's just a great time right. to break that That's streak, a, yeah. so I'll never have that as the factor. Right. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, no, nothing wrong with uh, calling it a day and then always coming back to it. And, you know, that, that place is, I mean, it, it's always going to be special. So, yeah, and I think you're right. And I think, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's like you were being a bit careful. I'm always a bit careful to, um, if I have anything I didn't like about it, I don't want to. There's no reason whatsoever to dissuade someone else no. because um, I think whatever, whenever it's your first time going, it's going to blow your mind. If that's the only time you go, cool. Yeah. If you love it and keep going and become a year-round burner, awesome. If you're yeah. somewhere in the middle, awesome. Yeah. You know, whatever it is, right? Absolutely. But, I mean, just, There's no reason to poo-poo it. There, yeah. it. It's for the first time for anyone. It's just it's a wonderland. You can't explain it, it no. dude. <laughs> 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 And, and everyone who hasn't been will say all kinds of stuff and be like, yeah, I know. Everyone says you can't explain it, but, like, is it this? I'm like, dude, I just, like, just, uh, you know just what? first go to burningman.org right. and just spend, like, a week <laughs> reading. Then yeah. come back and let's talk A couple more. of people that I've taken for the first time, I've been like, listen, here's my thing. Um, here's a little list of things you should bring. You can all, get all this from burning.org. And then I love you. That's why I'm bringing you and taking <laughs> yeah. you. But you're going to be on this thing that I came up with to help me keep my sanity, and it's called the question quota. Oh. So let's say you get 10 total, like, don't waste them. I, oh, I love you, but, like, I, you can ask me all these questions, but right. you just got to get there, and you just got to be s somewhat prepared. You're going to be fine. You're going to have an amazing time. Yeah. But here's, you know, don't blow these questions. That's on. great like, advice. What about, you know. The question you, quota. Yeah, you get yeah. 10, buddy. <laughs> you get 10. And, like, <laughs> and they'll be like, well, what you? And I'm like, well, is that your first one? <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> that's just me being a grumpy old dude. But That's awesome, man. <laughs> I like it. It's, it's a great. That's a unique feature we have. Virgins, this podcast yeah. is, is that uh, there's no rules against being grumpy old dudes. Um, let me let me we'll turn a little bit. I'm going to put this photo up here and just and kind of jump into the Myron centric stuff. Oh, here we go. Um, as I said, when you came in, I you know you and I don't have a lot of like personal knowledge of each right. other, mostly music, right? From being around, so I'm stoked we got the chance to and you could make the time to come in and let's jump into a little bit. Absolutely, of it. yeah. Well, you know. Thanks for having me here. Uh, I really appreciate the, the time to get in and uh, get to know you a little bit. Yeah. And for me, what's interesting is, I guess in 2013 or 2014, um, I was, I don't want to say in a weird place musically, but I was just um, kind of doing and searching some different things. And I had this opportunity because a friend, a good friend of mine was why I was getting the bookings. But he's throwing these really successful raves, right? And I wasn't going to go in and play, you know, deep or tech house for these kids. And I wasn't. And what timeline was this year? I want to say 20, 2013, 2014-ish. Hmm. And, you know, and I wasn't going to go in. And I didn't have any desire to go in and play dubstep. Yeah, and, I, was, I was about to say, right about when either yeah, Electro and, and yeah. Dubstep both went bananas and in I the festival been, circuit. Yeah, and I'd already been through and over uh, Electro, and I just like, man, this is now kind of cliche. So I was searching around, like, what do I want to play? And um, I don't know how I, I came across it, but uh, I was thinking about, you know, maybe I'll play some breaks, you know? Right. And... Uh, Somehow I found, I think it was... Because uh, it's the first genre on Beatport. <laughs> that's, that's why most people end up there. <laughs> that's so good. Maybe that good They're like high as shit like, oh, or okay, something. Yeah. That, you know, one night they're like, oh, you do shopping. Click. <laughs> first click. That'll work. That they're works like, for wait me. a minute. I'm not in house music. What chart? Where am I? <laughs> what is oh, this? Oh, this breaks. Yeah. Why does it... Why do I do want to do this? Yeah. But And and so I, I think it was... Um, bring back the funk yeah 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 that, yeah. that, was, and, that and was a big one for me yeah and, yeah. and so um you know i i found that song and found you and i started going down this rabbit hole and i was like dude wow these breaks are different than the breaks <laughs> i was used to in the 90s nice. you know like and you know i grew up right on the alabama florida line so i mean yeah breaks i know as you yeah. well know in florida are oh, yeah. huge they're around the yeah. whole southeast they're, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah they're not and so yeah. but it was just I, I was i was blown away not by just the the production value but like i was like wow this is fun 
and funky and it's just it's hard enough where you know I, I think it's gonna be fine and so I started playing breaks and I, at, at these rays and the kids were just they were losing their mind and having a blast That's and I awesome. got got introduced to you and I went followed you down this rabbit hole and yeah. had, uh, that, was it the white boy awesome? Yeah, and yeah. Was it the the Jujuicy Squad or Omega the, the Squad? The Juice Squad. Was and then Omega? Omega Squad is okay. another. Um, yeah. There's an artist based out of here, uh, San Diego. That's Brian Millar. You know Brian Millar? I don't know. That's it's, Omega Squad. I didn't realize that. You know Skandar? Yes. I so have. they they originally, uh, I think maybe originally it was Brian and then the two of them are great friends and okay. got together and did their DJ duo as Omega Squad. Okay. Um, Brian primarily produced music as Omega Squad, kind of, you know, just doing right. all of it. And um, now I think it's just Brian DJ okay. as well as production, but you know, interesting. Skandar's an amazing DJ too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Long and before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's been around for a while, yeah. and so yeah, I got really into it, and then uh, and just found all these really, you know, a whole like genre of breaks that I wasn't, you know, uh, it wasn't super hard and over the top, but it, it, it you know, it, but it wasn't, you know, like. The stuff I had been used to in the '90s. So that's that's my first recollection of you. And then all of a sudden, I don't know on on social media or Facebook, I saw you post something, and I was like, "Wait, that San Diego?" Yeah. And I think I reached out to yeah. you, like, "Dude, are you like Wes Smith?" Yeah. Um, in, in, in San Diego. I remember that now. And yeah. uh, I was like, "Hey, what's I was going in on I was here? in There's... Northern California. Okay. Before here, like." And when I say that, it's funny because people be like, "Oh, San Francisco, that makes sense." I'm like, "No, no, no, no. I was living in Auburn." Oh wow! <laughs> the opposite of, yeah. of San Francisco. Yeah, it's pretty rural, right? A lot of peaceful yeah. trails and mountains <laughs> and shit out there. I was soaking it in, man. Nice. I, was, I don't know if I'd call it soul searching, but I had gotten into um, I had gotten into trail running, and I was dating a girl up that way. And then not only got into trail running, but then got into thinking I was going to run like very long distance trails. And uh, for you or anyone that doesn't know, that area, Auburn, the quote-unquote one of the arguable first 100-mile trail runs, it it's starts there. Marathon, and ends there. is that what Correct, it's called? Yeah. Okay. And it's called the Western States 100. Oh, it wow. Originally, it was a horse race from, like, Reno to Auburn, you know, this 100 miles. That's, uh, I mean, it became I, a running thing once running got crazy. Yeah. That's that's one thing I, I, I mean, I'm so bad at running and... <laughs> Just, I think mean, it's overwhelming running. Like I'm about to do this hike next week. <laughs> like, awesome! It was like a ten mile, eight nine mile hike uh, to get into Havasu. Well, I don't hike. Like, if that makes you feel any better, it's like a, I can't stand I, hiking. Yeah, and I'm, I mean, like I'm just like, wait, people run marathons, and then I find out about these ultra marathons. I'm like, I can't even ra- imagine riding my my bike that far. So, wow, that's crazy. Did yeah. you do how? Like what was? I your, never. I, the longest. Well, ironically, talking about Burning Man, the longest I've done so far. Uh, you was didn't like, I did the fifty k, uh, the fifty k, which is about thirty two miles Jenny at Burning Crickets. Man. It's like six laps around. Uh, That's so you guys run around the, the you perimeter, basically run, right? Uh, yeah, you basically run Esplanade on the inside, and then you go out to perimeter and fence, all the way around. Or, yeah, trash fence all the way around, kind of like a baseball six field. Six times, uh, five, like five and three quarters. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I remember when my, yeah, I you start at five a.m. <laughs> It's hilarious, man, because you start hilarious. at 5 a.m. That's one way to put it. And you start at 5 a.m. Awesome. I ran it in a tutu also because it was Tuesday. <laughs> that's right. Put, put it there, brother. Dude, my man, that's amazing. <laughs> uh, and that sums up Burning Man in a nutshell. Yes. <laughs> one of the unexpected right. things, right? No, but yeah, like you start at 5 a.m. And then for me, it took six and a half hours. So I was, of course, running, you know, basically through all that as it woke up. And people come home and people start going and all the... Let it was me, a really neat experience from that. Let me give you my most sophisticated, intellectual, nuanced response. Please. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, does this help you understand why I, I don't need to go yeah, like, I'll last year was awesome? go back. I would have left my trailer for a month. I'd still be there if I tried to run. <laughs> yeah. Can you get your trailer out of here? No, nah, I'm yeah. still recovering from the... Wow, that's amazing and commendable. And at, There's, I think I've got the... That's the... Uh, uh, I don't know if I've shown this thing on here before or not, but you know how they do Dude, shit yeah. at Burning Man. That's yeah. a that's a that uh, handmade great. like computer circuit board with the you know with like their rendition of Burning Man and BRC fifty k. So cool. How many people do do about two hundred start and about half finish? Wow. Yeah. So I was you know that was my only goal was to finish. 
run or not die? I have run marathons before. <laughs> not, I was like, this is so insane. Was, in the desert. So, no, wait, so let me get this straight. Uh, a was the longest distance you'd ever run, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. And then B, it's in the desert, the yeah. high desert. And then yeah. C, you're at Burning Man. Yeah. Good on you, yeah. bro. That's rad. That's yeah, let really me step cool. it up a notch for you. So I, so so the night, since it was on a Tuesday, on Monday night, I'm I, sure you I, took I DJed. It easy. I DJed till two <laughs> thirty. I went and slept for like an hour and a half. Got up, you know, four o'clock. Did my normal routine for eating and whatever before I run right. long distance. And I went and did it. Did you? I mean, did you have any legs? <laughs> <laughs> I had one drink, dude. It was so hard to not drink anything while people were like just having partying, the time of their dude. lives. They were partying out. in a seven forty seven airplane, just banging, you know. Like, yeah. And that happened to be a breaks party, which was was that know. wasn't the Christie, was it, or the Christie? No, it was the actual that seven forty seven airplane okay. that got oh, stuck out right. there. That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the Christine was a giant boat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that thing's awesome too. It's yeah. still out there. I, I think I played on. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And what's really hilarious is if you're, if you're up on the top of the 747, like looking out of like the scalloped portion that's cut out of the top, uh-huh. so you're on the very top looking out, <laughs> and you see the Christie go by. <laughs> it's just so weird, man. Yeah, it's like one of the biggest planes in a big yeah, boat. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I, I don't think uh, I'm, the 747 was after my time. It that's was. Awesome. It's only been... Well, in fact, last year was the first time it had like the full height on, on wheels, like oh, on wow. the real landing gear. Nice. Uh, last year, yeah. Yeah, crazy crazy. stuff, dude. That's crazy. But uh, back to the rave, man. Yeah. So yeah, I'm playing and I go out and like I'm I'm playing breaks in a lot of your tracks. Thanks, by the way. Awesome. (laughs) Thank you. And um, uh, who else did I have? Like, uh, is there uh, Keith McKenzie? Mm -hmm. I want to say and a couple Mm -hmm. others. And um, it's been a while, so I'm forgetting some of the producers. But it went great, and the kids loved it, and you could tell it was different. And just, I really appreciated the funk, you yeah, know. Yeah, those because, elements. Yeah, yeah, because a lot of that has been lost, I felt, in yeah. all, all kinds of genres. Yeah, yeah like Keith music. McKenzie, you'd have uh, Sporty O was a really popular MC, uh, DJ yeah. Fix, a lot of stuff Fix, out. Fix yeah, and I've McKenzie, yeah. And done a bunch of remixes and stuff. Um, you know, a lot of the Spain kids are into that stuff, and they, around that time, they were just getting into kind of um, making a lot more of it, you know. Yeah. And I'd say they're probably the predominant ones today, making that style that was really around then is still, you know, they're kind of running the charts, right? If you will, these but days. You say Spain? Yeah, like kids from Spain, man. Really? They've got a cra- I went there and DJed, man. Like that's awesome. Yeah, they brought me there because it was so crazy there. It's still big there. That's it's like so a big rad. thing. There. That's you so know, cool. Like a couple thousand person event big. <laughs> you don't, I don't, those don't exist anywhere <laughs> that, that I know of not, in North America. Not that I know not of now. either. Yeah. They were, yeah. they were, they were, there was some of that going on 2012, 13, 14, 15, maybe up started to pan out right yeah. now. Maybe stuff like, like stuff you were able yeah. to do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's cool, great. Man. Well, yeah, that's, that's when, uh, you know, I, I first had an introduction, well, to your music first yeah. and foremost. And, uh, yeah, I didn't think in a few years I'd be, you know. Well, there's a lot of U.K. dudes producing yeah. stuff, you know, like, and Stant Warriors has always been a mainstay right. in yeah. there. And, you know, and then, uh, you know, Control Z. And I saw Stant Warriors cats, for the first time Rogue ever. Element. When they guys. played at Burning Crafty Man. Crafty Cuts. Yeah, Crafty yeah. Cuts. And they played a great set at Burning Man, Stant Warriors. Awesome. This is, I don't know, six, seven years ago yeah. or whatever. But yeah, that was uh, first time. Uh, like I, I, I was really aware of you, and then I was just so shocked. Found out you're in San Diego. I was like, "What? People in San Diego play breaks?" <laughs> yeah, like, right. I had no idea. <laughs> you're like, not well, not really, not really. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I had people looking at me like I was an alien, and I was playing that. But yeah, no, it went went great for the kids. And I probably played. I don't know, at least ten of those for that nice. particular company, awesome. and, it, and it was fun. You know, just. Yeah. It's, I mean, there was rays. I mean, it's a weird. high energy, like, I feel like it probably had a, it's had a couple, like, you know, like most music styles, right. it's had a couple ups and downs, and that period was a high point, at least stateside, and um, I feel like, you know, the, 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 the energy equivalent, like, was dubstep then for a bit, right. took over that energy right. oriented part versus the kind of... Um, 120, 122, almost Burning Man, Desert Heart. Yeah. Um, not even Desert Heart, Robot Heart, even Slower House, right? Right. Um, that kind of stuff. And then, because that's always there. Yeah. You know, House is just always there. Right? House is always there. And then, and then you have all these like 
energetic variations for the incoming <laughs> crowd. That's how I like to look at it, right? And that's a great Breaks, way you know, of like, describing it. Because yeah. you get a lot of young, you know, like, I should just say people with a ton of energy for whatever right. reason. Yeah. You know, just natural drugs, whatever it is. Yeah. You know, a lot of energy. What a dance. And, and usually just like standard house is not going to take care of that. No. <laughs> Depending <laughs> on youthful or yeah. acid or whatever, yeah. you know, it's just not yeah. going to take care of it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So that's... Uh, no, that, that's, a, that's, that's what happens. That's a great way to put it because, yeah, house is always there. I mean, And right now, I mean, drum and bass had a run yeah. in that kind of group of, of energy. And then I think right now there's almost a uh, it's almost a resurgence of, like, this music that's, like, close to the tempo of – you remember Gabber way back? Like, oh, almost 180 beat per minute. Oh, wow. Four to the floor. Like, 180 beat per minute. But hard dance. Drum and bass speed, wow, tempo, yeah. but, but four, four to the floor. Wow. Yeah, so – do, 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 yeah. do, do, like that speed yeah i've heard i've heard it that's so interesting because when yeah. i first went to to burning man like in 04 or 05 it was i felt like it was all drum and bass oh you know? really oh yeah man you don't hear like no dude unless that's my so unless crazy. my friend like agent 137 <laughs> shows up she wasn't there last year and <laughs> i didn't hear one minute drum and bass no and that's the crazy thing about it is like and then you know all of a sudden it was like oh no we're all you know, hippies and gypsies now, and yeah. we, uh, you know, it's 120, 120, and like, hey guys, can we maybe find a little happy medium here, something in, in the middle, but yeah, that, that was uh, that was the most interesting thing, it was one, it was all drum and bass. When, that blows me away, man. Yeah, 04, I just had no 04, idea. 05, yeah. I don't know if, Ev, I don't know if Evlo is still in here, but he had jumped in for a minute. You know Evlo, local? I don't know. Yeah, he plays, he's with United by Bass crew. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He plays sometimes drum and bass. Mostly, I'll probably get his specific genre-ish that he likes wrong, but mostly, like, I would say Tech House or the kind of newish, newer, a little bit faster tempo house that's going on in that movement right now. Yeah. Um, but he does also play drum and bass sets. Really? For their, like, SD Union stuff. Okay. And they throw their drum and bass parties. Yeah, he's, he's a talented guy. I'm so glad we're having this conversation for a multitude of reasons, but for the fact I'm getting exposed to some things here in my town that just, yeah. I had no idea what was going on. And uh, that's cool that there's still some, you know, weird underground elements. Of, yeah, I mean, they do, they do probably, f I mean, I'm going to guess three or four at least, probably more strictly drum and bass parties nice. a year at Spin. Oh, nice. So if anybody, you or anyone that listens or later, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, check out the SD, you know, like San Diego, SD, SD, SD Union. Union. Okay. Yeah, and they, they've got a pretty long history, and they do it right, man. Good production. That's they always awesome. Tyler, Tyler, you might know him, uh, MC Ritta. He's, he's like, I've MCs seen his it name all. for yeah, sure. Yeah, and he's a real nice guy. He's been on here before, and uh, great MC, and That's keeps awesome. it pumped, and yeah. a lot of energy going. Yeah. And, you know, he, he sounds very British. <laughs> when he does his MC, awesome. you know, he's got all the, he's got years and years and years of successful, uh, you know, MC to, to lay down. And it's, it's, it's cool. It's a neat vibe. Yeah. But I don't know anywhere else that, uh, you'll hear a set, uh, you know, at some other things, uh, some of the into hoodie shows. Okay. Or, I don't know if you're familiar with like Rufio and the enter the tech stuff. Uh, yeah. I want to say more underground raves, tech, if you yeah. want to call it that, yeah. <clears throat> you know, one off spaces. Yeah. So they'll, they'll have a, side room sometimes or a couple sets but not a whole night right, right. SE Union's the jam if okay. if, if, if you I'll gotta go, go out and yeah. you don't wanna hear anything other than drum and bass for a night do that one. SD right. Union's your plan couple, <laughs> I'm gonna take a couple of my friends and freak them out I have yeah, no man. idea some yeah. of my younger friends yeah oh yeah I got a spin and they're gonna be like oh, okay cool it's gonna be this and it's not yeah. gonna be that yeah that's awesome but I'm, I'm also glad you mentioned some of the re you know that being one of the reasons or just knowledge of the our own local area because i it's one of the great things i love about having people on here yeah i mean I'm, i've already got a number of things from you today and yeah. just i'm always amazed regardless whatever the age range is right know, I've, I've had everyone from um 20 years old to that's maybe awesome 55 that's roll awesome. through here so far yeah. <laughs> so it's like uh, I'm, yeah I'm it's pushing a headspace the, I'm pushing dude the 50 <laughs> so. yeah yeah well, that's awesome too that's though, cool man. and i know i don't know if it was you i i thought there might have been a, a couple of breaks events at was a kava lounge perhaps yeah and I, d I did i did i collabed with um again with skandar and brian okay. to do most of those and another friend of theirs um brian another brian i forgot his last name but um bb was kind of his nickname um 
anyway, so he, he had done for a while. I, I never, I think I might have gone to one Wobble party. It's called yeah. Wobble. That was this other Brian. Wasn't also Wobble a little bit of a genre of music? Or, uh, or am I mistaken? It was, or maybe still is, or it was yeah, just the general like, wub oh, kind of, okay. you know, bassy yeah. Yeah, thing. Um, probably used in whatever capacity. Yeah. But yeah, so there was a series we did at Kava. Those were a lot nice. of fun. Then I did a few day parties at other places. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I haven't, I haven't, uh, in the past year or so, I haven't, I haven't done anything that was exclusively breaks. Okay. Yeah. I mean, my interests are beyond that anyway. Absolutely. And they were before breaks. Right. So like, yeah, like, you know, it, it people, it, it's kind of funny to them when I, when they say, well, what music did you start with? Yeah. Like, what got you into it? And it yeah. was like. I can distinctly remember it was um, like the faster acid techno, not acid house, like not the acid, acid, acid techno, techno shit. Techno, like, yeah. Yeah. For anyone that hears that one, go DJ like DJ Misja, which was I <laughs> or M I S J A H. They were all like Belgian. No and, way. You know, that kind of like just hardcore, like 140, 145. Sounded like electro. Right. But, but prior movement to that and just. So fast and gnarly, not a lot of words. <laughs> but that's uh, yeah. that's kind of where like when I when I first started when I first moved to San Diego in the late '90s, you know, like our our biggest DJ then was John Bishop, right? And uh, he he's hard house, you know. Yeah. Super hard, and uh, you know, there's basically just two places to go. <laughs> Your house music there was um, riches. On Thursday night, it was a party called. Wow, he- that place has been around yeah. a long time, huh? Yeah, it was a place, and it was a party called Hedonism, and John Bishop was the resident, and yeah, it was, um, it was he played really hard house. <laughs> wow, <laughs> got after it. Because uh, I only knew John Bishop from breaks. Because when I did the Crystal Method, got me into breaks. Like when I heard, right? Like it was like them, and then like. Like many people, just got into electronic music yeah. because of the Crystal Method. But yeah, yeah, that, that, was, that a, was my that one seminal album. They segue had, that, into yeah. Uh, yeah Vegas. That That's that was it. my segue into to the world of breaks was yeah. through them. Yeah, but I loved Acid Techno, man. Yeah, I was so I, good, dude. It was just this arpeggiated. Was it? You know, like big buildups, like two minutes. Oh yeah, two minutes. Yeah, I was about to say, and then just. But not like ethereal, comfortable buildups, like heavy shit with lots of clanging and claps and snares. Oh wow! And cymbals, you know, crashing. Just. Oh wow. Yeah, I man, I haven't heard any hard dance in a while. Every once in a while, when I'm on beat portal, you know, I'll click onto something just to yeah. kind of I'm like oh my goodness there <laughs> yeah. it is there it is and then I get like a little flashback to like the late 90s early 2000s and I'm like Oof. yeah nice yeah people you're kind of like huh yeah someone's it's, still listening to that yeah exa- exactly it's <laughs> like oh wow people are still getting after it like that like, yeah wow, how does that work in 2019 yeah um and it's amazing what just Go, go, well, I want to go back to some of your how what you're doing right now, you know, nowadays, and kind of how that's evolved. But uh, well, there's a good segue for it, really. So you were you were kind of doing you did like ten or so of these breaks type raves, yeah, or raves yeah. that, mm-hmm. that where that was okay and worked, yeah, yeah. Um, and then moved on to what, like what? Um, of- well, I mean, I was still doing uh, you know a lot of clubs, and um, oh, at the same time, at the same time, but I had this opportunity to play a couple of different raves. And uh, like I said, I just knew what I was playing in the club mm-hmm. was not going to work. And I was like, uh, you know, I, I don't think I'm, I'm going to play dubstep. Right. I'm pretty right. sure I'm right. not going to play dubstep. Right. Uh, you know, I want to find something that works for these kids that's, you know, high energy going off. And so what, when I, you know, when I discovered some of the breaks that you were making, some of those, those other guys, it was so great for me because I was like, you know, there's some funk, uh, uh, you know, breakdowns, and there's some stuff that are, you know, I, I hate to, to to sound douchey, but at least you can educate the kids a little bit. Like, there's other ways to dance and, and have fun, yeah. and there's ways that, you know, can make you shake your butt, make you shake your ass that you might yeah. not have thought about before, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, uh, and then just see the response. I mean, kids are losing their mind yeah. and having fun. And people, it's funny you said that because people ask me, it's one of the answers I give when people ask me, like, 
uh, why I think, you know, Brakes currently doesn't really have much momentum. And I'm just like, well, for one reason, it had a good surge in 2015, yeah. 60, 14, 15, 16. Yeah. And that's just how things go. Yeah. And, uh, and the other is, uh, you know, on the more positive side is just I think people, because they don't hear it a lot, I think they don't have a good idea of how to actually dance to it when it comes on. And that's not fun. Like when you, you know, like, <laughs> like my mom was here for like three or four weeks. Oh, by the way, real quick, you can, I don't know where you're at there. I can move the camera a little bit. I was just making sure you were not cut off in half. Okay. Like times where I go Find like this, here. see me, see me in the thing. And I'm like, oh, what up? <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so like my mom was here for like four weeks and just kind of have a little mother son fun. We oh, nice. decided we were going to um, take uh salsa lessons so we did this and and so my point about like <laughs> it's like if you don't know how to dance to something it's not fun yeah. you know like and it's just like a lot on your mind and you try you just don't it's, it's a not lot, an, yeah. it's not like it's not like it's, it's not as great a time at being out as it would be if you were dancing to something that you liked or you could you knew how to dance to even if that's freestyle and you just felt good doing it so to me now that's kind of the equivalent of like i get it like if it's uncomfortable and you can tell like for me when i see people like play a, uh go into a bunch of breaks at a place where it's not right you know and i don't do it anymore you know but if if i see you know some people i have played with and they do that and i do see the floor struggling you know and and i and i and you know i see others even at like bang bang last weekend i was there and um this guy matt zo who's awesome you know, DJ producer, like international guy, he was there because of that big cross, or not cross, but like the LED presents weekend. Oh, they kind of right. had shit everywhere, you know? Yeah. So I went up with Eric Diaz, I went up there and uh, he played early and then we stayed. And, and Matt Zoich, like, he's playing this banging, like, great disco house and house and cool stuff and probably like 126, 128, you know, pumping right. BPM. And then he dropped in a couple of breaks tunes in there. And it was literally like, like, people just didn't, it was like, they don't know. Is this? Are we supposed to go get a drink? Yeah. Like, is this like? <laughs> is this a time? It could. It could have just as well been a breakdown. It could have just as well been a five minute breakdown. That's, like, I don't think anybody did, like knew so what to do. Interesting. They just didn't know what to do. And it's a great analogy because with breaks, I and, and like I have a lot of um, friends who are in their twenties and that aren't familiar with breaks at all. And once in a while, I'll play something, and they'll be like, "Whoa, what is that?" And I'm like, well, yeah. "This is a break beat." You know, that's yeah. how that goes. Like, there's different beats besides you know i know yeah i know you've been listening to this yeah uh deep house you know and and but that's so interesting your analogy about you know it's uncomfortable because they don't know what to do because you know all of a sudden your brain is hearing this beat and, and and deciphering it and there's enough going on there to where you can't your body i think kind of intrinsically knows that you can't just get away with the this and the little shoulder and then yeah, like there's a, a lot whole of other it part like, that, like well, some of it that has that super basic just kind of electro swing is okay yeah. for that you know like you can get away yeah. with it like if it's super like there's you like know, multiple things going on here and i feel like my shoulders and my butt are probably <laughs> yeah the but they're well, going like, different yeah, directions exactly. what do i do man like, <laughs> i actually gotta do more than you know and yeah that, and then just kind of sit there and sway back and forth and, and yeah and you definitely I've, it's very rare to see anybody if they want to try to figure out how to dance with like a guy with a girl or vice versa to, to pray it's very difficult yeah i can, I can it, it's yeah. possible but it's very different than <laughs> than the house yeah, this could be yeah. a, a new thing it's salsa lessons and uh breakbeat let's, couples dancing yeah <laughs> let, let's face it people people they get their grind on on the dance floor yeah that's for it's sure all good, man. that's for sure and that, that's people why it, going out. It, it worked what with the kids because they didn't they, i mean it's, if, if it was moving and banging like they loved it and uh and then you could just watch them start em, em, embracing some of like the, the, the like some of the really funky stuff that you guys the break yeah. you guys are making and yeah. embracing that. That's what and I really enjoyed doing. Yeah, the most and and, it was, the and uh, that, that was super fun. But because I had come from, I had grown up in uh, Southern Florida, not South like Miami, okay. but just kind of Southern as a kind of Southern boy. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and you well, know, I grew up right from the, Alabama. Yeah, you, right on the Panhandle, you, and you kind of you know what I mean by country, a big oh, country, right? Yeah. And, and I really enjoyed do, growing up that way. But one of the things that did was expose me to a lot of that Miami um, kind of electro, Miami bass, dirty, you know, electro yeah. sound. And not electro, like electro house, but, you know, right. like the, the broken beat kind of stuff. And so I didn't really, I you know, I didn't really want to make that because yeah. I had 
that was kind of like my formative years, like listening to it. So I didn't. So while a lot of people were doing breaks of that nature, I just didn't. So I just went the funky direction. Was yeah. kind of just what I yeah. It was great. It turned like, out great for me because I caught it at the right time and had some uh, well, like bring back that funk and other stuff. Yeah, that were, were pretty big, so it was cool. Yeah, that was. Um, that was that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed enjoyed yeah. playing playing some of that stuff, and like I said, I had a great time. The kids had a great time, like losing their minds, crowd surfing. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what you do when you don't know what to yeah, do. Yeah, right? exactly, exactly. What? Uh, so so going on from there and like maybe up to now because it wasn't but four or five years ago. Mm-hmm. You're talking about like what what were you kind of into and what was going on. Um, um, outside of you know the rave type stuff you were getting you were able to do yeah I was I was I was playing uh, some club stuff and then I, I was uh, producing music with uh, right around that right after that period of time um, with my buddy Scooter um, of Scooter and Lavelle and okay. uh, we I, I just wanted help with a, a, a remix and I, now I can't even remember what it was <laughs> And uh, we just went to, went to his studio and started uh, making music. And before we know it, we had a couple tracks and a couple more tracks. And then we ended up doing this thing called Eurobeard. And Eurobeard. Pro- Eurobeard, and just okay. producing some music uh, as that. And it was just, it was kind of a, a throwback. It was just more like funky, filtered house. Um, with some, um, you know, some cheeky remixes, right? Uh, some James Brown. Uh, we did. Uh, who else did we do? Like we edits did. and stuff, kind of. Like some of it was edits, whatever. Yeah, some of that too. M- m- was more bootlegs. Um, uh, we did a couple of, uh, like s- silly edits, like uh, I-, I did the uh, Alan Parsons project, <laughs> um, <laughs> Eye in the Sky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, going deep, yeah, yeah, uh, really showing my advanced age there, and um, but yeah, just uh, some funky filtered house, and was having a blast doing that. Uh, rode that for a couple of years, um, and then you know, things I, I kind of got a little burned out, and I, I kind of got a little over how. Um, how deep things had gotten yeah. and I, I kind of felt like um, obviously with the EDM thing and the EDM bubble like uh, it, it just a lot of the fun uh, 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 had been sucked out of it and also like I, I come from like just a background of like like I liked punk rock music, I liked rock billy, uh, you know I liked rock and roll and metal too yeah. way before electronica but I always liked being like on the punk rock scene where things were underground. And um, so for me, like the music scene had kind of, and it was my own fault because I'm playing in clubs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like, like, definitely wasn't underground. Yeah, anymore. definitely. Like, shockingly, <laughs> That's for sure. shockingly, it's not. Um, but then even the underground to me kind of got cliche and almost, um, you know, I was like, well, like the EDM thing went f- to, you know, it's almost at a spinal tap level for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, at some point, we're I'm all going to look back at this and be like, are you serious? Like, I don't know if Eric Diaz is still in here, but you know him? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, he popped in here for a minute when we nice. were talking about Uberzone. He <laughs> popped out, but he was like, he or he mentioned Uberzone and said add them into the into the fold. But yeah, dude, that's pretty funny that you said that. Yeah. Spinal tap level. It was He'd get a kick out of that. Spinal tap-ish. And then, like, even the underground scene just, to me, became even less... Um, fun and I just didn't see a lot of joy in it and I see yeah people are having a good time but I, I also just saw just uh, uh, it was just so homogenized the mm. look the sound and there just didn't seem to be a ton of joy in it and, and I, I went to a couple things where you know I the dance floor it looked like zombies you know what i mean well there were some drugs that went through that also right. had contributions to yeah, that these people choice to use them yeah and then i, I and yeah and i think there was obviously you know like there was people were when I mean, we live next to mexico people were doing k 
in the late 90s and early 2000s because yeah. you can get it there. Well, yeah. then it just came back, you yeah. know, and these kids were just all about it. But then you just see them, and I'm like, dude, yeah, that, that's... That was, that was a crummy period. I'm like, are you yeah. serious? This is what so you guys... participation. Yeah, are doing... This is not <laughs> dance music. Like, I've yeah. seen more joy and better dance moves in, in a Sunday church service, yeah, you know? Yeah. I've seen more... You know, at a salsa party. At a salsa party, <laughs> the Wesson and the Mama. Who knew, man? <laughs> you know, getting down. And uh, yeah, so it, it just, uh, it just it, for a little while there, it was. Uh, it's like I don't, I don't want to be this deep, and I just don't want to be this over the top. And it's so interesting what you said earlier, because you're like house will always be there. And I feel like I, for me, just artistically, I just kind of went back to like you know, I just want to find some good house music to that yeah. I can play that you know it's got some funky bass lines it's not taking itself too serious it's fun yeah you know yeah. and let's just have a good time man like it I, I don't care what you're into or what you look like like I just want to have fun again and see people dance yeah. and make out you know yeah, on the whatever. dance floor yeah. and like just you know have a good time instead of it you know, I just for me it got to this this period of like yeah, yeah, things are serious, man. Yeah, I was like well, it's not it's dance music. It shouldn't well, be like this it's serious. funny to me. Like I don't even think one of the ironies to me about the underground now is that just even thinking there's an underground in a sense is separatist because, like, at least Amen. from the way I always saw it, like we 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 called it underground because like nobody even knew what the music was. Right. So it was underground, as in you couldn't hear it on the radio. You couldn't hear it. There, yeah. were, there, there wasn't an internet really to hear it on. Right. Um, situations like that. But you certainly, if there was, I mean, it just wasn't, it wasn't going to get any kind of commercial backing or anything that required money yeah. to broadcast it. Right. I don't think it would have mattered what it was. It just wasn't going to get it. Right. You know, um, so it couldn't get widespread, you know, a little pirate radio here and there for, you know, yeah. ten mile radius or something, but you know <laughs> what I mean. Much, yeah. From a college dorm till yeah. that got shut down yeah. by the FCC, things like that. So, yeah. So like that to me it was always what underground was. It was never about like, you know, I'm gonna go over here and party with people that, you know, I want to party with that aren't around you people, kind of thing. I, I never got the sense of that ever, yeah. ever when yeah. I was in the early, and you do get that now. So Absolutely. not not always, but you do get a delineation in some circles where underground is more of a, uh, well, it's I, an indicator of separate separatism th versus that was the word that, uh, that, that just resonates with me. I wasn't sure if that was me. the right word, no, but that's it's, the word it's I separatist. used. separatist. It's like, yeah. oh, we're so cool that we're going to go over here. And I mean, I, yeah, I, like you would make a choice to go versus maybe right. some other music you might even like more. You would make the choice because of people and this branding. It was never a branding term when I was right. You know, there. A absolutely. And I the problem was it didn't exist anywhere. Else, yes. Period. That's so true. That's yeah. so true. And I understand. And you literally had to r to do things in places where the cops might not find yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. You know? And, and I, I don't, I fully, you know, embrace and endorse, you know, kids and people not wanting to go to a club. Let's take our city, for example, and, you know, have to go downtown and worry about, or any uh, urban downtown. Pick any place in Gaslam. Yeah. Or any I can place, understand why yeah. someone may not want to go there. It, it's a pain. It, San Francisco, all these places. Parking, parking dress code, you can't wear a hat. Like, come on, man. Uh, 17 <laughs> bucks for a, I mean, like, yeah. I mean. You, so you, I totally you, get yeah, that, too. I, I, so I, you. you know, go out and do your thing wherever. But also, like, it, it just kind of got, like you said, separatist. And for me, it got kind of homogenized. And, like, I was just like, and I'm not seeing just a lot of, not that I'm doing anything about it, but I'm not seeing a ton of creativity. I'm not seeing a ton of joy. Mm -hmm. And I'm not seeing a ton of people like really shaking their ass and dancing. Like, yeah. well, what's going on? Well, it also team? got super big, meaning just just use EDM in general, like the whole entire mass of electronic music, right? The whole electronic dance music. So it certainly got super huge. And, you know, I mean, in theory, like that should be big enough to where you can have, you know, groups of people that go to free parties and groups of people that go to desert parties. Yeah. And there's enough room for people to go to gas Absolute, lamp or whatever you know, vegas blah blah yeah absolutely. that's the way i looked at it you know i think it's that's where it's gone but but uh but yeah i mean i could see though where that period for sure was a, a bit of an unfun period what do you think about now like i think i think like um i think some of the fun is, is coming back like i, I you know 
like even with the tech house, it's it's which I you know I've been playing for a little while now. Like there, there's more fun remixes. People are having more fun with it. Um, it's more funky. Yeah. Um, and, and then the bootlegs have certainly come back. Yeah. You know, with a little bit, with like I would say a little higher quality, maybe. Yeah. You know. Absolutely, and, and, and so I mean, like, it seems like people are. Uh, like, some of some of the some of the stuff I've seen out there just seems to be more fun, and like people are like, hey, we're in this to shake our butts. We're in this to smile and have fun and just be joyful and, and enjoy ourselves and, and not take it so serious. And um, you know, I, I saw that you had uh, Michael F more than friends on yeah, there. Yeah, that guy's a trip, man. Yeah, and th those kids are cool. I had maybe one of the best DJ names ever. It's so good. <laughs> So good. Uh, it, <laughs> when I was actually posting the the pic, one of the pictures to my feed, I started typing. Um, I'm like me. I was like me, me and Michael more than friends. <laughs> and I thought about that for a second, and I thought you just let I better reword yeah. that. Like, like you know, yeah, might put in think we're more than my friends. Butt, like my DJ. So buddy. in quotes, yeah, like quote. me and Michael, aka <laughs> DJ, more than more friends. Than friends no. <laughs> It's yeah, that's, that's that's great. He's a um, trip, dude. But those kids, like they 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 seem to have a lot of joy and be having fun. Hood politics. Yeah, and, and getting after it. I had them couple play a couple of my parties when I was uh, doing parties about a year. Well, I stopped my party about a year ago. That was the um, me and my friends. Me and my yeah. friends. Um, well, the venue got sold and went out of business. Uh, um, fair reason to stop. Yeah, and I was fair. like, I and, and I was busy with some other stuff, so. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're, I just, you know, again. What I up, just, Ben? Yeah. <laughs> Quick shout out to Ben and, Z ben and Zen. Nice. Yeah. And uh, just, yeah, seeing people, like, having fun and, and, and like, not taking it as serious and, um, you know, just letting loose. And, I mean, because, like, when I first started doing it in the 90s or mid and late 90s, and we we were just you know granted we were going nuts but we were yeah. just having so much fun and yeah. ear to ear smiles yeah. and just a sweaty mess yeah. at the end of the night and uh, you know that's 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 I, I feel like it's kind of coming back and and dance music it, 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 it's it's so circular as well, you well know yeah and and I think another huge contribution like to that um, that maybe perhaps energy two things one is like. For for the four on the floor or house, you know, mm -hmm. if, if some people just consider that all the same, and I don't. Like I like the the kind of house I'm into or four on the floor I'm into a little faster, yeah. bouncier, funkier, you know, that kind of stuff than maybe like classic house, right. Chicago house, right. that kind of stuff. Um, to be clear, but uh, I think that those rolling bass lines and a little bit more, um, the, you know, a little bit more sound engineering you know going into things and hybrids of different genres coming into that 404 beat is nice it's cool yeah. now like you're saying that and also though going to the, that's like my current thought but on the wayback machine it's like i think a lot of it was because you you like i didn't get to listen to anything electronic all week long until i went to the big party that friday that's very salient point. Is like it? Where where did we have so to was, listen so to? So me and everyone I knew, we were bottled up for the most part listening to the same exact mix, maybe, all week. <laughs> yeah. Playing stuff ourselves right, right. At, at our crib or maybe yeah. with a couple friends, someone else playing or whatever, doing some jam. That was it. And even that, we were limited, very limited into what we had because, you know, there's only so many records yeah. or even CDs that were, you know, like yeah. that when you're talking that kind of level. So, yeah, I mean, That's there was no streaming point. a whole yeah. bunch of new shit off of whatever. That's a you know, yeah. um, which I love that too now because personally I can explore a mad amount of things. It's you know? crazy. There's just not enough time, which it's is awesome. Crazy. Yeah. The opposite of them. Um, but speaking to the point about the energy or the freshness or whatever, I think that contributed a ton. It's really. And I don't think we'll get, we won't get that back. Yeah. Um, which is cool. We'll get something else. Right. It's just waves. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's a that's a great point. I, uh, I'm really glad you said that because. Um, you nailed it like we waited for that six seven day period to get back yeah. to that feeling that release that whatever that joy and then we i mean yeah. we just all wow and if a big yeah. name yeah. came yeah like, that was like once a yeah. month yeah like, yeah so when i was on the east coast like it would be like i don't know what it was going on wherever you were but for me it was like you know like if dj dan was gonna come <laughs> Carl cox was gonna come i mean dude Love dan. you didn't even know like yeah 
what color they were. No. You'd never seen a picture. No. So then yeah. add all that on top. Yeah. You just knew it was some cat getting, you know, somehow coming from the UK yeah. to play music for you and everyone was freaking out. Yeah. No. We're, it's definitely a funky energy. Yeah. That was a, that was a, a neat thing to experience. Kind of like going to your first burn. Yeah, it, yeah. It really is. It really is. You, you had to know what to expect. And uh, yeah, most cities and most towns, like my first rave I went to was in Biloxi, Mississippi. Oh, yeah, let's talk about that area. Yeah, and you know, I grew up. I don't up, know much about that. Yeah, I grew up on, on the Gulf Coast of Alabama, right on the Alabama Florida line. All right. And I don't even know how I found out about this, but I, I know, and somebody who went like the previous month or two before. Yeah. And, uh, dude, man, this is, you gotta check this out. And I was like, oh, yeah, well, it's a show? What kind of show? Like, well, right. no, it's not really a show, but, you know, everybody's just dancing and playing records. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> All right, what? let's go. Sounds, right, like- yeah, so, sounds something interesting and different. And, you know, at that at that age, you're whatever, let's go. Yeah, yeah. You're, just, you're gonna go out. Yeah, <laughs> when there's like a super dark, sweaty room packed with like two, three hundred people and just. Was this like in a, uh, a warehousey area? Yeah, or, it, yeah was. it was. It was actually uh, no. It was actually like it. It was an actually, if I remember correctly, it was like kind of in a rundown uh, strip mall, and mo- there was hardly any businesses left. And this was just like one room, and then we all yeah. went in the the back. rundown strip mall yeah. rave. Yeah, it was the just best. yeah, and we kind of all went in the back and. Uh, yeah, it was it was totally old school Acoustic pirated. Acoustic ceiling partly yeah. missing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's like panels missing. That old drop ceiling. Hoping the fire sprinklers yeah. don't go off. And uh, yeah, that was my uh, that was my first exposure to it, and you know it was it was nuts. Went to a couple of those. Um, yeah, I don't think I don't think people realize how big. Well, I certainly didn't realize it because we had no way to communicate with each other. Really, you know, no, certainly I mean, not graphically. There was. Things like ICQ and other sort of chat, like relay type stuff. You had to be pretty nerdy, pretty techy to, to, to be doing that stuff, I think, at the time. So, and that certainly wasn't a thing of ravers. That was yeah. just, a, that was a nerd thing that was out there for yeah. computer people. A lot of which happened to be into electronic music. But That's true. But I don't, but I just don't remember any like real way to like, you know, like there'd be a bulletin board that was like SF raves and yeah. maybe a DC raves. Yeah. And a couple others, maybe. But I don't remember, like, any way to find, like, the Biloxi Raves or whatever. That, I mean, I'm sure it was out there, but I, I'm, just, I'm but still you didn't amazed. know anybody from there, you didn't know. So. Like, how do we find out about things? Like, and I mean, like, this is, like, probably 90s. I mean, it was usually an email relay. Because that was where I would email, like, bounce, yeah, maybe you know, it was. AOL CDs all over the world, you know. And maybe it was, but I feel like it was actually, like, the old flyers that, and, like. That for sure, and for I, sure. Maybe it was even on our college campus, like, there would be, like, the bulletin board where you'd go yeah. and see shows. And, and, like, you know, and you'd ask, oh, who's, this is coming to town. And That um, was probably first. Yeah. yeah. You're probably right, like, that was 93, 4 so That was probably first, and then not too long after, I think, you know the proliferation of AOL and dial-up, yeah. and I think that was when kind of like the AOL IM chat started. Yeah, and there was like another rogue, like I think it was called ICQ, like ICQ. Yeah, just ICQ the letters, like it was right. You know, you know everyone, yeah. everything was named <laughs> shit like that back then, like because yeah. nobody cared. Yeah. No one was trying to sell anything. Right. You know, no, no one was trying to sell anything on the internet. No, so it's just like, it's oh just shit, all, we'll create this yeah. chat relay. Yeah, and then I moved out here in 98, and you just found out about things word of mouth. There's actually, I take that back, there's a, a little magazine for the San Diego scene, uh-huh. and uh, it was called Where At, ah. and it was like about this big, you know? Little. Little, yeah. A mini book. Yeah, yeah. And it like came, a mini book. Yeah, and it come <laughs> out, like, I think it came out every other week or something. But dude, there's like two places to go, you know? Yeah. There was, like I said, Riches on Thursday night. And then there we had Montage, which is Spin now. Okay. Which was, was also a gay club forever. Okay. And then on Friday nights, they would have, you know, straight parties there or, or with DJs and stuff. Uh, on yeah. a side note about Spin, do you have any idea why that's the only late night place allowed? Because um, I, I think just, it's the only one, right? Well, no, there's that a I know of. bunch of bars that downtown that have licenses to stay open until four. Oh, but they don't use it's a them. choice. It's a, it's, it's a choice. I just thought it was a law, and somehow they were well, grandfathered it, it, in. It is a law, but there's a bunch. Of, I shouldn't say a bunch, but there's probably like seven to ten that have that. But huh. 
they can't sell al- alcohol. So it's not worth it. They're to paying, stay open. you know, security. But they're, right. you know, and what's the point, you know? Okay. Um, the Keating Hotel would do an after hours. They have one, and they have kind of like that, almost like a speakeasy underneath. Uh huh. I used to play shows there all the time, and um, they were they were cool. They're like, if you if, if you want, like, when, if you're in, we can shut it. Da- we can shut the doors, and people can stay until four. Oh, okay. Um. But it's just it's a it's a San Diego thing. Like we have a really uh, just pretty conservative yeah. mindset. Right. Uh, our politics uh, are pretty conservative, and that's uh, true. People just uh, nobody's been willing to to buck it. And like I, so I they don't, don't want. I mean, they're not they're not making as much money, and they don't really want to push the limits of what, just being yeah, why, why, why pop why up be on, on the somebody's radar. radar. Yeah. yeah, and 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 you know, and it spins like an event space. Right, so get, you know, right. And there are other event spaces. They're not really used for electronic music, but yeah, but, but other yeah, kinds of stuff. Nobody parties. stays open, and like, and we. I mean, this has been the discussion for twenty years. And there yeah. used to be like I used to throw illegal. I mean, that's how I almost got started with DJing. Is oh, okay. Uh, I was throwing these underground, or for lack of a better word, you know, um, after hours parties. And um, <laughs> Michael Vay popped in. You know him. That sounds so familiar too. Yeah. And uh, that's you know we used to dude the after hours used to be such a big thing here. I don't know if it really is because uh, I'm old and decrepit. And, <laughs> uh, but like I wonder yeah. like what do, what do people what do the kids do for after hours now? Do they just go to somebody's house? I don't know. Kids, if you're out there, let me know. Uh, um, do I mean like? Well, I mean th- yeah, they just yeah. After, I think afters at people's houses. And yeah. There's the occasional spot or two that have something going on, lay a couple of warehouse places that are, I think they're actually legit. They just, yeah. you know, again, they try not to do it too much to right. drag too much attention. But I've seen like San Diego, at least like, it seems like, you know, when it's at a legit space that is a, like, it makes a little more sense now that you said there actually probably is um, legally some allowance for it with the right license. So I think... Mm-hmm. It seems to me like the few places I've been to that appear to be like that, you know, because they're pretty tidy. They're not like some abandoned right. joint. Um, the police seem to know what's going on and be okay with it. So Really? Yeah, but it's not crazy, like 3,000 person right. event going on. It's like maybe a couple hundred people. And this and is pretty after well hours behaved. going until... After two. Yeah. Yeah, pretty well behaved. Maybe going like till five or something like that, the two to five window. Yeah. You know. So we... Yeah, but I've never we, seen any problems with the few I've been to, like... You know, stabbing or I, yeah. weird shit. You know, San Diego that, that would have alone, attracted yeah. a problem. Yeah. Uh, no, I was one of the first people to throw a, a, a party at the old uh, Soul in the Machine. Uh, where was that? Warehouse. They still do parties, or they were still doing parties there. Now um, it's down, um, kind of underneath Coronado Bridge. Oh yeah. Um, but that was when. Uh, like near. Oh no! I'm thinking of the, another bridge. I think that goes by that Cesar Chavez Park. Yeah, that's near the there. Bridge. Yeah, yeah. So that what's that kind of neighborhood that came up pretty pretty nice now uh, in that area? Barrio Logan. Barrio Logan. Yeah, yeah that got completely gentrified. <laughs> Which you can no longer you can no longer yeah. buy a, a beer anymore. No, for, n- for yeah. less than ten dollars. No, that's 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 one of the hard lessons of gentrification, I, I think. But yeah, yeah, we it's, we used to do, and that after hours was just such a big thing, you know, because people were. In the early and mid two thousands, I know they still are, but they were partying really hard, and so like yeah. the parties would just go nonstop, and um, yeah. So I don't know what what people do for after hours now, but yeah, there's there's go home, yeah, go <laughs> home, call it a night. Well, the other thing I think is also a factor here, which why you know aside from maybe a little bit of maturity, like for me personally, the other reason I don't care so much about the afters is because right. where we live. You know, like like myself, and I know a lot of others. We're into whether it's uh, going on a hike. Yeah, you do this year round. Yeah. So whether it's going on a hike, uh, it's going to be good weather. You, you the know, next if you surf, day. you're yeah. definitely usually. You know, if, if you surf and you and you actually surf, yeah. you're definitely going before nine o'clock. Yeah. If you live here, absolutely. Otherwise, wind before picks the wind up. Gets on it. Yeah. yeah. Assuming tides are good, whatever. But you know, like any homies that are in that group, you know, they're not going to go at one. No. <laughs> you know, or three. No. You know, or it may go super late when wind dies down. But, yeah, you're going to be out early. If you paddleboard, same issue. Uh, probably any water sports unless you need wind or want wind. Right. You know, so, I, you know, it's a lot of people do that it's a, stuff. It's an active city. Running and, and all yeah, that. And, 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 yeah. And, I mean, that's what, Beat brought, the heat. That's what brought me yeah. to San Diego. Is I, 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 and I used to play pro beach volleyball. and so I, I Really? Was, yeah. So I was all 
I don't know, it was all over Florida too in the East Coast, but nice. then I, I was coming out here to train and I was spending um, now we're a couple, the good shit, couple of winters in, uh, <laughs> in, in LA and then I came down to San Diego. This is the mid, like 93, 94. And uh, yeah, I fell in love with San Diego. But yeah, it's just an, there's so much to do. There's so much active stuff here to do. So like, volleyball kind of brought you through here the yeah. first times? Yeah, Which absolutely. Which makes sense. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and uh, tell me about that, man. I'm, I, I I've only played volleyball for like six months. Um, like I took proper lessons here. Oh, did you really? Yeah, I learned. It's cool. Like nice. you know the basic, you know, yeah. two on two, four on four, and the rules and setting and so you know, I social. Could, I played a bunch of pro tournaments. I can play beach volleyball all day, but I couldn't run three miles like it. <laughs> so, yeah. So just so we got. Well, I might have been the opposite. The people <laughs> I played with would be like. They'd be like, dude, what are you, this is weird, man. I was like, I don't know. Because um, yeah. I'd actually go run before I played volleyball with them. Oh, and geez. they would see me because they'd be out there setting up the right. nets. And I live right up here, so I would run down to the <laughs> jetty and back. And they knew I lived all the way to, like near Tourmaline. And they're like, what do you do? Like, why are you is running six warm miles up? before you're playing <laughs> volleyball? And then I'd ride my bicycle back down. <laughs> That's hilarious. I was like, dude, this is not, like, for me, this is no. it's just like, I'm just, it's like something to do other than walk. <laughs> Basically for me, like it, it just does, it doesn't register as like exhausting my legs. Wow. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, but that's the, neat. The where did you, yeah, you go with that? Like, what were some of the oh, interesting man. places? Uh, oh, I played all over. You know, the country. Um, I got to play tournaments and pro. Uh, yeah, yeah. I uh, played on on the Eastern Pro Tour, and then I came out here, and there's this thing called the AVP. Uh huh. Um, I've seen the hats with the yeah. Flip that up was the, the volleyball <laughs> guys, and yeah. uh, in the late '90s and early 2000s, like I was always, uh, I was always a qualifier guy. Like you have to, you know, play the qualifier to get in. So okay. at the very bottom rankings of the pro, the struggling, you know, lower ranked guys. But it was great. I mean, I loved the sport. Had a amazing time. Um, still have some lifelong but friends. But even that though, man, is like a level. Oh, I don't think gnarly. people understand in no. almost any sport, like the level between college and, you know, not pro yeah. and anything that's remotely, yeah. um, it's a big gap yeah, for, between, you know, like between allowed to be pro, yeah. right? Like you can even qualify or try, right. to, like that's a big gap Yeah, it between is. top in, of in, your college or something sport, and then yeah. that. Yeah. And yeah, like surfing's like that. You, they, they just make it look so easy. Oh, dude, surfing. And it's the, like, the you don't understand how hard that is. It's like, yeah, I it's surf. the same thing every time it looks like, but. No. Dude. It's what the kids are doing now <laughs> is just surfing and skating. I just look at it, I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, I, I, I mean, just blasting big airs and landing them like it's nothing. Yeah. And 10 years, 15 years ago, nobody was like doing that. And yeah. Just, or making any money at it. Right. I mean, you can really like nowadays, probably just about any sport. I yeah, guess if you just get popular enough and yeah. shit, if nothing else, you get a big enough Instagram account. That's it. Now people like don't even have like for, for surfing, you know, like, you know, the, and this has been a thing for a while, but now, you know, people can get sponsored and make great live, you know, get paid by sponsors to go yeah. shoot these videos. So, you know, companies will have content yeah. and uh, for their own Instagram or YouTube channels yeah. or, or whatever. But uh, yeah, man, there's some. Yeah, of you do see a lot more of that bringing, well, even the parties now quite a bit, you know, like yeah. I've got friends that are uh, a few levels up from, from where I'm at, you know, like in DJ circuit stuff and they, some of them are making enough money to, routinely bring you know either bring their actual like a videographer with them wow. if they're making real money right you know big money or um kind of as their entourage if you will or uh, or just connect with local um you know the the local people that do the good right. shows for other people locally and then hire them you know and just 400 to do, just strictly to, to come follow them around and just at whatever party they're playing it. yeah Document it and usually spit out, you know, a three to five minute three to five or minute. one to five minute, you know, yeah, a couple Instagram to, clips, a yeah. couple formats and then blow and go, you know. Yeah. It's all about the content. Yeah. You, know? you got to have have yeah. the content. Um, Wild, right? It really is. Versus uh, the beginnings of it all. Right. It really is. And it's is. in everything. We're just. Absolutely. You and I are, you know, passionate about music. Yeah. So that's where we've seen it probably impact heavily. But it's yeah. in everything. Yeah. Absolutely. Software, games. Whatever, yeah. probably whatever sport you're in. Whatever sport you're same, in, dude. yeah. I mean, like, yeah. and, and the kids, like, nephews and nieces, they're all about YouTube and following these people on YouTube yeah. and YouTube channels and, like, that. 
I mean, passively at best, interested in some television or TV shows. You know, they you know they want to watch and learn and yeah. follow things on YouTube and uh, YouTube's yeah. a monster. It's crazy. I mean, like for for full format or any length content, YouTube's a monster. Like yeah. Instagram, clearly for like the clips and the teasers and basically marketing yourself yeah whether that's for no reason or a reason it's all marketing essentially right like you're advertising well, if you have a nice whatever. butt i mean yeah you're advertising something and i and i'm in there too so Absolutely. i'm all for it you know i get it but 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 youtube is just a beast yeah there's just so much there man i i went maybe a year or so ago i mean obviously i knew youtube existed and i used it for various things but i hadn't really connected the dots for myself so much because i was really involved in soundcloud and more music centric things right and as i realized more producers or or the audience for some of those music centric services particularly soundcloud were very also very producer or dj centric which was cool and so i still use them but i also realized because of that you know, and fans are a lot more on YouTube, but really what did it for me was I realized when I traveled to do some foreign gigs yeah. and met kids like in India and some in Europe and less privileged places and some Russia and some through Mexico and some of this stuff and everybody's on YouTube. Yeah. That's the only place they get their music. Yeah. There ain't no Spotify. No. There ain't no SoundCloud. There's no Pandora. Nada. Mm. Everyone. YouTube. YouTube. And you go to a house party for after hours youtube playlists yeah that's right that's it and they know where all that shit is yeah and they it's like i mean not like search is a mystery but they they know all the ways to find the mix of what they're looking for exactly. it's like all the youtube centric bullshit that you got to kind of tweak around to right. know where stuff is. you know every service has its own kind of uh, a little bit of a lingo to how people have decided they're going to organize stuff right yeah you know and, and how it algorithms they're so it, adept whatever. at finding it and using it and no it's, it's what i think what opened my eye to it i was nerding out listening to a podcast i think from a local sports guy but he has interesting and different people on there and and there was a local show called sam the cooking guy okay um <laughs> who was a local san city, diego local yeah oh, sam I love the cooking it, guy and he had this really great show and it was on um it was for like and he, he he was funny. He had, he had a cool yeah. personality, and he'd have, like, funny anecdotes. And, you know, he'd be talking, and he'd always, like, nick his finger, and he'd be like, shit, you know, like, right on, you know. And he had a really cool show. Um, it was on the local channel 4 here. And then he got picked up, yeah. and he was going nationally on a couple of, on, a, on a, like, a, a national cable channel. And um, then it got cut, and then the local channel 4 got bought out by something. So he's kind of sitting there wondering what his, he's doing, and his son comes home. His son, he's like, my son's way smarter than me. I think he said his son yeah. went to Brown or something. Yeah. It's like, Dad, you got to try this YouTube and try making a YouTube channel. Long story short, cut to, you know, now they film at his house still, but they yeah. film and put it on their YouTube channel. And he's like, I'm a, like, we're over a million and a half, going to be at two million sub subscribers. He's like, people can watch whenever they want. And he's like, I have the numbers from even when my show was national. Yeah. And I have... He's doing better. He said, by three times more Probably people... Probably so much more fun, too. Yeah, three times more people now see my show on YouTube than ever at the height of when I was national. Yeah. And, you know, then he also discusses how he yeah. monetizes it, obviously. But then you're just like, oh, yeah. wow, that's like... Really and even and even if you don't monetize it, you can still do it. Yeah. And that's what I realized when I was I've been in Mexico a bunch this year doing a few different things. Part of it I mentioned was some of the Baja racing in Baja, but also mainland with some friends and doing a little bit of music work too. But I realized through there, like I was like I had watched a lot of stuff before on YouTube that were music videos, like basically the replacement for MTV, but it was right. primarily American trending music, right? Yeah. And so I was used to seeing like, I don't know, maybe 50 million plays or something would be pretty big for something like yeah. that was an American pop tune or whatever. And and I guess because it had all these other distribution outlets as well. But when you're somewhere where nobody's using any of those other outlets, just YouTube, yeah. and then the music reflects that culture, and I'll give you a perfect example, like reggaeton. Dude, look at like the top reggaeton videos, the, the official, huge. they're billions of views. <laughs> There's some out there with like two and three billion. That's insane. And I was thinking, how did, like, because 
I was like, wait a second, maybe a couple years, you know, I hadn't really paid attention and, and maybe Katy Perry has that too. And I looked at a few, I was like, no. And these are artists you never, like, yeah. like you haven't heard of unless, yeah. you know, and it's all in Spanish, for yeah. example, for that. I'm sure there's Chinese stuff that's similar and, and uh, you know, Indian and Hindi or whatever, probably similar. These, you've got these populations of four or 500 million, a billion people. And, and since that's the only way they listen, they, they don't buy, you know, a lot of people here don't buy music either. Right. But no one does there. Right. So it's like all streaming and it's all YouTube. So like the three billion plays might represent, you know, it, well, it is representing everyone that's listened to that song 20 times. Whereas over here, you know, yeah. quite often you'll Shazam it or especially if you're a DJ producer, you'll Shazam it, do whatever, and maybe go buy it. And then like you might listen to it 50 more times. But that doesn't get recorded That's on YouTube. Nobody, there's no, yeah. Yeah, so no I realized, oh, this is it. why. Yeah. But it's really kind of cool, too, yeah. because it's really representing, you know, you know, it's it's pretty clear to me, at least, that, that in, in, in complete Spanish language music, that's pop music, probably, at least from everyone I've met, they're, they're not getting it any other way. That's, it's that's all crazy. YouTube. That's and so crazy. I feel like those numbers are probably pretty real, you know? Other songs are probably getting a lot of plays like that too, yeah. but you just don't see it compiled in one no, that's spot. So interesting, and I don't get to see the analytics yeah, of someone else's shit. I mean, that's crazy. A billion plays like, and more. Think about that. <laughs> yeah, like that's that's. I yeah. mean, you think about some of the huge all-time, you know, album sales and, and, and like how many units they sold. I remember when. Do you remember the song? Um, of course, you remember Gwen, Gwen Stefani or No Her, mm -hmm. and No Doubt. When she went solo, she did a song. I think it was like either Hey Ya, you know, like Hey Ya, Hey Ya, or something like yeah. that. Or it was like one of the ones about gold. One of her like fun, poppy Gwen Stefani right. tunes. I remember when that song sold a million downloads on iTunes and everyone was like, that's a record. And it was such a big record. Like as in, you know, that's breaking all the right. records. You know, and it was like the first glimmer of hope that you might could actually this download thing for pay would work. Yeah, that's that. You know, if, if anyone listening, go Google that. Whatever that that's song crazy. was with Gwen Stefani, it was the first one to get a million paid downloads. And now they're shutting iTunes. iTunes down. Re yeah, I mean they'll still have services. Just, it's gonna yeah. switch the music out, whatever. But they're not shutting it down for performance. It's to make it simpler, make and, it simpler and more streaming, more navigable, centric, yeah. right? And, and, yeah, and reach a little further into the yeah. bank account. Yeah, you know, make it easier, make get more people in there. They're, they're, I mean, iTunes and, well, Apple Music, I guess, is the subscription. But they're number two. Are they I really? Think. Subscription. Paid wow. subscribers, I think they're number two behind Spotify. Wow. I think they passed Pandora with Do no problem. Do you use Spotify? Some, yeah. yeah. I've, I've never used it. I have friends who like it and love it. And I'm, Yeah. I'm, I mean, the biggest reason I use it is to go make sure my artist stuff is, like, actually on right. there. Other than that, I really don't. Yeah. I can't say that I use it, like, routinely. Yeah. I, I'm just using YouTube now. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Dude. I, I'm totally. No, I, my mind is totally like because I, I realized like, and I and I, I so I still have I still post up to SoundCloud. My my production still goes out through Spotify and all right. the commercial services because you, you make some money there. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of reaching like the broadest audience possible, yeah, I, I'm a total believer that YouTube is is the way for me to do that. No, absolutely. And of course, many other people do and. But I don't think you're ever late to the game. It's just putting some focus over there right. and making sure people know you're there. And you've got this catalog of whatever, 100 songs there That's and, and trickling it. Because you, you know how it goes, man. For some people, like there's some people that will hear some song four or five years ago. And to them, it's brand new. Yeah. No, very true. So if it's a good song, I think, and this is kind of my message to producers and music people that make music or create things. Like if, if it's a good piece of content, there's no reason to ever think that it's just dead no you own it as long as you own it and yeah. you have the rights to it it's always got some value probably beyond your own personal satisfaction yeah and if it's a good song it's going to have some staying power yeah. and it's not necessarily and gonna... you never know when a new generation finds something yeah and bam you know right. it's all over the it's place right. look what we discovered that old yeah. saying you know big in japan or whatever <laughs> like, you could totally be like some band that makes it big in mm. wherever yeah and there's tons of tons of uh tons of that out there uh, that's that's been more my focus actually for the past couple of years is uh, live music and and live um, just going going back to live music and, and writing music. Cool. And I, uh, I hadn't I didn't know we had never had the producer conversation or musician conversation. I didn't know that you were into it. Yeah, um, I've been uh, for about a year and a half now, or longer than that. We've been working on it longer. 
Um, but we got away from that. We just came back to it about a year, a year or so ago. But I've been writing music with somebody um, and just trying to put a band together. Oh, and, cool. Uh, to yeah. do live shows or? To do live shows. Um, what I do want to do is uh, she sings and plays a little guitar. I play guitar and, um, and some keyboards. But, uh, yeah, I want to do, uh, like, a, more of a traditional record, you know, um, and we're getting close to do that. But then I also Me- want... Meaning, like, multiple songs? Multiple kind of songs, flow. exactly. Okay. Like, an actual... Not there yet with a concept album. <laughs> not 10, 125 yeah, BPM you know, bangers? Yeah, <laughs> no. But, uh, you know, an actual, you know, like, some songs, some of it more just straight up rock and roll. But I also want to do... Um, where we do get in the studio and, and we make, you know, some dance versions of it and some poppy versions of yeah. it. Because um, I mean, everybody likes to make money. Yeah, whenever you get to that point, man, I'd love to hear some of it. Yeah, yeah for sure. Absolutely. And we're getting yeah. close. We're cool. getting close. And uh, cool. just Sometimes just, even just like the outtakes, especially vocals or, um, you know, guitar instrumentation, which can pretty pretty normally make it into a dance track without a lot of trouble right you know yeah but sometimes that can be the you know i mean the, the, the talk difference. to daft punk about that yeah it's just one little lick yeah can, you know and it can be something that people know like within two seconds who right. that is and it goes yeah. from a simple lick to something iconic yeah like you said yeah and um so yeah it's um but if that's just you know live music just it's just different and it's different when you have to rely on other people and you know and work with other people oh and, yeah <laughs> you know you have the logistics of actually wanting to be in a band it doesn't make me want to do it anymore <laughs> yeah did you are you a musician too i noticed your guitar some keyboard some guitar right. but nice. i never played in a band live right and uh I, it's never struck me there were times where i really wanted to yeah um i didn't have the discipline to to get to that level and probably wasn't at that time um, maybe collaborative enough with people to get along or didn't know the right people to get along All with. Right. Tried once, I guess I should say, in college. We actually, I think we formed the band, <laughs> but uh, we never made it past doing a few covers, that, this cover is, tunes, and yeah. we didn't have singers. So that was a problem. Yeah, no, this will be, this will be <laughs> my first band too, but uh, yeah, it, already, you know, the dynamics of working with someone, and, uh, you know, I'm, she's super talented, and cool. she's great. Um, she's from San Diego. She's in LA now, but oh, you know, she is a she. So there's sometimes when things are just, yeah, you know, they're not as uh, they're not as easy as it would just be for me. Well, that's an experience in itself. But having it is, to work with people, yeah, and, and 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 it's something. It's 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 a learning process. Oh. But uh, no, the, the 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 chemistry is there. But it's just for me, that's really been exciting to just get into and learn the process. Awesome. And I, I'm really looking forward to actually going into a studio and learning like a whole or different aspect of how you know this is gonna how this is gonna come together yeah Um, yeah and if you haven't been around even the the the, like the tech that's in the studio now that's gonna be fun too yeah i don't know how much you've been around i haven't been much at all the the way recording and stuff goes now the beautiful part is it's all a lot easier now so yeah that's great you know you can you can uh you know you can save a lot of stuff that right. normally would have been tossed yeah you know yeah and uh but that that's kind of the the hope though is uh be able to you know have songs that you can perform perform live yeah but that can also be put out as dance or pop yeah and um yeah so we'll see we'll see oh, where that goes that's cool good luck with that yeah 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 i think if i i've seen a few projects which really interested me and kind of spurred probably the way I would do it if I if that came about and that is um you you might you remember Armand Van Helden of course oh, yeah. yeah big tunes and he, I, I see he still plays some shows and stuff but uh, him and some other people like him like w- they've done some projects where instead of like they're not musicians let's say right so um, I don't know him personally but let's just say he's not a musician so um but producer you know and can work with people and understands the the studio and the dynamic and the shows and all that clearly so um you know so if you get to a level of popularity where your songs are really you know a lot of people do know them specifically right like i think one of the things that interests me is when you then go find a a band to essentially play those right possibly a rendition of them or you know you want to probably be somewhat their take on it not Mm -hmm. just the equivalent of had you press play as a dj Right. right so i think but I think there's a lot of leeway there. 
but if you can get to where you have the budget to 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 actually go do those shows, I think that for me would be the time where that'd probably be right. Yeah, absolutely. To, to, to venture something like that where you could. I um, I enjoy playing really spice up a show when I'm DJing. Um, you know, just playing my guitar along with songs. You know, yeah. of, of whoever, wh whatever I'm playing or feeling. Uh, and I used to do it. The logistics of it just—it's tough right now because it is, man. The first of all, there's just the sound aspect of it. Like you don't most most clubs are not set up with with the sound to handle, you know, a guitar or live instrumentation. And you don't. For me, I would never. I've tried it running a guitar through a DJ amp. Oh, or DJ man. mixer and, and you see that black box sitting right there. I do. What is <laughs> that, that had a that was as small as I could get my live rig. Really? That I was doing all of it live in Ableton. Oh, you so you were playing through about, Ableton live? Yeah, I did it for probably did four or five shows over a period mm -hmm. of about six months. But the logistics and everything just, just killed a, me. Yeah, it's just, and and, it, and the simplest problem of all was like people didn't want it in their venue. <laughs> they didn't want to make space. There right. was no space. Yeah. Even if they wanted it to be space, yeah. and then. You, so then it was like, okay, so now I got to plan ahead, which is fine, but then I got to deal with this and back and forth, and there's just not a lot of money, and you know, maybe exactly. in the whole thing, a few grand or something. Like, people don't want to bring in the guy, the, the the special guy at that venue that can deal with that, right? And, you know, and then you have to have more sound. Everyone gets nervous sound. about changing yeah. you know, some sort of you know a, a non CDJ type input to the mixing board. And, you know, that's a different night we do live bands, and you know, like. It's just like it's cool. Yeah, it's exactly. just it's right, cool. Right, yeah, and technically it was pretty hard too. Was it? it? Just took so much preparation. Really? Yeah, because basically I don't know if you know how Ableton works, but like it has the like a traditional arrangement timeline view, but mm -hmm. it also has a thing called a session view. Yeah, and you can clip, you know, yeah, uh, spart, uh, parse everything down into clips of whatever variation you want. Yeah, so I was basically playing live out of the session view with an gotcha. APC, and that was super cool. You know, and I could have some of these pedals you see up there and some yeah. of the, the, the like, uh, Midi Murph and Mooger Fooger stuff. Yeah. That was stuff I could slide on, like, there's, like, two decks in there. It may be hard to believe, but there's actually a shelf in there okay. that you can fit a fit few more things. Stuff, and, multiple. Yeah, and just carry it. And then you could spread those out and yeah. wire it up. But all that just... It's, dude, it's it a, like, yeah, yeah. It, it, and it ends up becoming more work and more of a yeah. hassle. And then, I mean, you kind of, like, do people even appreciate? No. What? No. No, no one I ever was in front of. No me. one ever. Like, Ooh, yeah. it, only and in fact, and in nerds. fact, because it's not flawless, like then people would more so get upset that it wasn't flawless. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, this is just the uh, not the, the time. It's part. not the time for me yeah. to do this. Yeah. So that's why I was saying, like, if the budgets were bigger, like if I was getting, you know, if I was one of these, you know, touring acts that's getting, you know, twenty grand or something, right. I, I would totally take the time then to to probably finance getting the right people together that could help bring that on the road and right and have a tech make sure it's not my headache all yeah. the time yeah you know just have i'm just not that good at it yeah so that's what i learned yeah. <laughs> you, know? you know hey at least you tried man. yeah 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 and uh but I, it was exciting i bet a little whimper of excitement there so if i i bet i just realized it was a money thing like you really right gotta, and, and yeah. i think for me that's that's a, a, a lot of it just something different something exciting besides yeah. you know yeah, but not that it's mundane. I, I don't it's want to sound It's pretty easy to make two songs, dude. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> you don't have to make like, any excuses like, for yeah. me, man. I was just like, okay, <laughs> this is great, and um, but you know, what's the next step? So, but I do. I, that being said, I I, I really um, want to bring my live act back at certain venues where I can do it, and. Um, I've I I produced with Scooter using Ableton, but I'm really been uh, intrigued with like some of the artists are doing with Ableton loops, where they're using live instrumentation and then looping it. And um, I got to go see FKJ when he played here at Humphreys by the Bay. Okay. And he's a multi instrument uh, instrumentalist cool. instrumentalist. Nice. And um, yeah. You know, and he's playing saxophone and bass and uh, guitar and piano. And he's just a oh, that's awesome freak. He's an amazing musician. And um, this is you, real quick, isn't it? That is me. Okay, cool. That is me. Somebody asked me if I could post a link to your song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd, uh, shoot it out there. Um, I put your Facebook, but okay, cool. And uh, that was actually uh, one of the raves. Uh, I think that'll get him started. Yeah. <laughs> Um, then go down the, the bang, my, bang go down then go down the, the Myron yeah. Eugene rabbit hole from there. Yeah, well, there's not uh, not a ton of Myron and Myron Eugenes out there, so yeah, pretty there easy to.
pretty easy to find. People ask me how I got my name, and I'm like, well, my parents went like, let's give him like a super nerdy name, and <laughs> let's double down. And the yeah, G. man. <laughs> well, I can double down on the middle name with you. Well, what's your, what's Ellsworth. You? <laughs> wow. Bring it, dude. <laughs> wow. Wow, you just one of me. I see yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> like it's only part, but I mean, yeah, you know, like okay. Myron and I, Wesley can't compete with yeah. Myron, bro. But Ellsworth, that's got some Southern sensibility. There's, so, there. I was gonna say your name did this in, I, before I even read the the Alabama part. I was like, it's got a little bit of a little yeah. Southern gentleman to yeah. it, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, my, my, I don't have much of an accent. Um, I don't think it, I do either. Do I? No, I not so. not really. It's been a long uh, time since so I do. Uh, and I, 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 <laughs> this is, as the kids would say, this is racist or sexist or misogynistic, but. I assumed when you were from Florida because of your breaks, yeah. you know, and I was yeah. like, oh, he's got to be from Florida. That's great. Yeah. You know, in my I mean, head, I did I'm, grow up there. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, not that there's anything I'm not wrong mad. With I never that. mad at anybody for making that <laughs> assumption. It's fine. One thing I learned, one thing, you know, just between, you know, us and anyone listening in and out of here, like that I, I definitely found, it took me a slight adjustment a few years back was like, I realized like as a creator, you know, and you share that in, mm -hmm. in your different experiences. Like, uh, w like kind of once I put something out there, like I can't, there's absolutely nothing I can do about how excited or how unexcited someone gets. Right. There's absolutely nothing I can do about when they find whatever it is I put out there. Like yeah. the day I put it out, five years after I put it out, even if I remove all of my, you know, traces of it, it'll be somewhere. somewhere. So I can't do anything about any of that. You can't scrub. So there's your, no point uh, in like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's just no point. Like, and it also reminds me like, probably don't put anything out speaking musically that I don't that I don't love at least at the right. time. Yeah. You know, because it could you know might be the biggest <laughs> thing you ever do, and you know follow you around. Yeah. Um, but also, but also learn not to let you know if something got big. Also learn not to let that continue to define me. Yeah. You know, that, if I'm not feeling it anymore, just don't. Just do what, so what, do what you like. So what? What are you feeling right now? What are what are you making or playing or if B I, bigger bigger bass house type stuff? Nice. You know, crunchy electro ish. Yeah. You know, uh, feeling I guess a bit. You know, um, that's interesting. I like a lot of the drums from like the Dirty Bird records and stuff. Yeah, mostly the percussion. I don't really. I like I like the music, it, not for me to produce or play. I, I right. like it. You know, there's a, there's a fan Absolutely. of music, and then there's stuff I feel like making, right? Or playing or in a playing. DJ set or performance, and so um, yeah, I mean, I, I I like a lot of those really crunchy, big kicks that aren't you know they're a bit breaky to me. That, yeah, very certainly syncopated, I, and no doubt, you know. Kind of felt some of those some of those breaks creeping into some songs like in yeah. breakdowns, like a, a, yeah, I, I, I you wish know, Kaz Tech has done a lot of big stompy stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a good way to put it. Like, yeah. you know, the tempo could vary anywhere from, I mean, I've done stuff in the last two years, anywhere from 122. That one actually ended up being more funky and, a, and not so much syncopated, but just because of the original, it was a remix. And then for Cued Up, that was a really okay. fun, funky house yeah. remix. And then um, all the way up to not much past, probably 128, 129 BPM, yeah. BPM on the four of the floor stuff. Gotcha. Yeah. And on the not the four the four, you I haven't made much yeah, in the last yeah. two years. Uh, I released some that was stuff I had already made. Right, <laughs> you know, uh, it just it just happens. And there were things I really liked, you know. Nice. So I still put them out, you know. Nice. But sometimes I wait and sprinkle it out a little bit. Yeah, you can get, put too much of a certain thing out. I feel it's That's, made, it's done. Yeah, I know I'm going to put it out, but I may right. wait to do it. Do you, are you releasing through a certain label, or are you just putting? I it mean, out Juice there? Recordings. I, I my huge. default is there for everything. Right. I, I send some stuff to some people. Gotcha. Uh, you know, it's I don't know how much. Have you taken much time sending things to people? I have. So you know and, what that's like. Uh, yeah, I have in the past. <laughs> I mean, some of the feedback and some of the stuff that you get, you're just like, uh, okay, you know, and uh, yeah, I did that with a lot of the, the with our with some of our Euro Beard stuff, and um, yeah, it's just. You, 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 it's like it can kind of almost, if you're not careful, it can make you dislike what you're doing. Yeah, it can be soul crushing. You know, yeah. sometimes I just rather get silence than and then people send you back weird stuff. I've gotten you know like weird. Oh, can you change this? And you're like, wait, okay. And um, you know, some of the feedback is like, hey, this is cool. This is not what we really do. And, yeah. And um, which is totally understandable. Yeah. But yeah, and it's, polite. And polite. Yeah. yeah. And, but it's just. 
I, I'm interested to see where the record label thing goes. Like somebody is going to come around and like change, I feel like, how we look at rep- le- record labels and how they do it. Or, you know, it's just going to go more. Well, the first, people are the just going to release on YouTube or whatever. Like, And they clearly are. Yeah. I think the first the first inkling I got of the direction of the record label was was watching things like um, uh, like Dim Mac, you know, mm-hmm. Stevie Oki's label, yeah. uh, Matt Decent, Diplo's thing, um, uh, Fool's Gold, that's uh, A-Track, those cats over in New York. Yeah. And not all necessarily, certainly not house music per right. se. Some, they kind of a little bit of everything. Um, a little bit, I guess, of what Skrillex did with Ausla, but, but, but the part I was going to say is like, Particularly those those first two, Dim Mac and Matt Decent, like, and Dirty Bird, like they've really um, the Dirty Bird's a little after I think historic like timeline wise, like they really have also branded parties that go along with the label Absolutely. vibe from the art music whatever stylistically, right. and I, and that I think is where the label went. Yeah, I think that's where it went. Yeah, I'm not sure what'll be next, but I'm pretty sure to me that's where it went because those guys are all. Throwing, you know, like hundred thousand person, you know, at least once a year level, you know, or at least twenty thousand or ten thousand cases yeah. of Dirty Bird camp out, things like that, right? Yeah. And that's what they're doing. And so I did. That's partly what I did. You know, the, the Juice recordings. You know, the word recordings has been there forever and will right. be as the business. It just is what it is to release right. music, blah blah blah. But um, but then the Juice Night Out and some of those things were thoughts that came about from playing shows with people like Shuey and others yeah. where we came up with it and thought, you know, let's 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 do something like that, you know? Right. And it'll probably take a long time or never, but but it seems like a good thing to do to keep it a little simpler for people, yeah. you know, to... to well, it's uh, great branding and it's a great know. way to meet people and, and it, it, like, literally, I, it's, I think it's easier to identify yourself or I mean there's so much music and there's so many labels and there's just it's I mean we're inundated with it but I think what the average person or kid or fan or whatever you want to say or househead are are gonna be able to identify with is like oh here's a party yeah we can go to that kind of goes with this vibe we like. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and, yeah. and, you know, or they can just go like, hey, we want to have a good time and do this. And, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, they could just go to the party. They could just do the music. They might right. realize it's together. Um, but I think some cohesiveness there is yeah. good. And we didn't want it to just be, like, juice recordings parties because it just sounds like a record label. Right. So we just, uh, you know, like, I don't even know how we came up with Juice Night Out. I think it was because there used to be this guide, you know, the timeout guides? Yeah. It was like Time Out New York, I yeah. think it was the first one, or Time yeah. Out London or something. Yeah. Old school shit. Right. You know, paper or whatever. Yeah. And I always just remember, that, for whatever reason, that's always been in my head. Like, clearly I use Yelp and other stuff. <laughs> but I'm always like, I always, whenever I use Yelp, I have this old school, like, little airplane banner goes through my mind <laughs> of Time Out, you know? And I just oh, thought, great. you know, and, and I remember the first guy explained it to me. He was a music buddy at the time. He was like, oh, yeah, because I had gone to Europe. He's like, oh, yeah, look for Time Out. And I was like, what, what Time Out? What do you mean? no idea what it was and he's like no no it's a magazine yeah. I was like oh you don't mean like time being out like <laughs> oh but it is a play on words right. it's your time, time out, out. Mm-hmm. so I just thought alright well that's cool like juice it's night originally it was juice day out we were doing day parties and then um, some were okay and, and there was a little test thing and then um, we just decided well shit if we're going to do it at night we'll call it juice night out juice night that out it. Yeah. it's pretty simple no it's great <laughs> yeah you, like, you don't like and then started doing some releases for a juice it actually night worked out. out great because we now uh, as it turned out, we the Juice Night Out releases, which were we just did the fifth one, and they're like three or four songs each. They're just more clubby, okay. you know. Yeah. And so it kind of leaves the freedom to like, like do whatever on Juice yeah. recordings. But if it's the Juice Night Out, it'll have the same kind of brand and logo, and it, they all look the same. Gotcha. So you, it's really easy to, you know, if you go Google Juice Night Out, yeah. you're going to see a list of parties and music. Oh, that's Which great. was the point. So yeah. after about a year and a half now, that's what's happened. Nice. So I would say it's at the beginning of that. Very cool. Yeah, yeah and like that's the way things, like well, you mentioned Lee Burridge earlier, like All Day I Dream. Yeah. Party and yeah. label now. And I think the party came first, didn't it? I mean, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, and I think like, I think it's, you know, like someone like a United by Base, you know, like, yeah. hey, you know, if you're throwing great parties and making money, um, that's cool. You know, let's assume they are. Um, yeah. I still think, you know, you know all these music people. Why not start a label 
it's, it's not that expensive. It's not expensive at all to start it. Right. There's some requirements to keep it going. Yeah. But, you know, probably the same people that are helping you throw the party, you'll help do the label. And you don't have to go bananas. Do right. a release a month or release a quarter, whatever. Yeah. But it does over time. Like, I'm, I'm recommending it to anyone because, yeah. you know, because it's, uh, it's a whole lot less expensive to start a label than it is to start a party. Right. <laughs> so if you're already got a banging party. <laughs> yeah. And I know some, like, and I think some people would might be like, well, why would... Why bother if you're making money and record label is kind of notoriously a loser? Right. Well, right. But with a party, you're not going to get, you're not going to be putting out anything that has a lasting representation of you. Exactly. And with music, you will. And the other crazy shit that can happen with music, as you know, yeah. is you could get a hit. You could get a hit and you can and Then all get of a sudden, your party is on the road. You're, yeah, exactly. Dirty bird. Yeah. You know. Great example. Right? The Desert Hard Kids did it. Desert Hearts. I guess they did their party first. But. Same kind of thing, though. Yeah. Same yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And with but, a, but even, great example, you and I don't even really know which came first. Yeah. And that's exactly what we're, like, we're talking about. Right yeah. Now. So. And you can also, only people within a small radius of the world will have access to your party. Yeah. And Absolutely. If your party has music, like you said, like everybody in the world, you know, yeah. theoretically can access that so yeah and then go play it and you're and then your party brands run yeah. around the world or whatever and yeah like said so yeah I mean, we're and and like for us we're only trying to do like like our goal is like i'll tell you this now <laughs> it'll be it'll be really funny if like a few years from now we do this again it's like different but yeah like the goal right now is just to she and i had toured uh did about 10 shows around the country together okay and then um we kind of did that together to have fun and do the shows and then to come back and kind of say like what do we want to do next? And so that was the, the evolution was to like kind of stick to the West Coast, nice San Francisco, Vancouver, San Diego, that kind of yeah. stuff. So the goal is like three a year. It's not like one every month. <laughs> and, and, and but that probably makes sense to you as someone Absolutely. who's run a was it a weekly or monthly? You did it for, was a monthly, but even that a lot was, of work. It's a lot of work, and uh, you know you have limited but limited budget with with where we were working. The you know people we were working with were. I was working with were, were pretty cool. The, the venue was really cool. Um, but again, you know, I was trying to fill a void or a niche as uh, a, a place in San Diego that, you know, you could go for l no cover and hear um, some great local DJs. And, and through my agency, I had access to, you know, when people were in L.A. to get them to come down here. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, we had some some bigger acts come through, and, uh, and some of my buddies on the a a on the agency would you know, yeah, dude, I'll come play yeah. here for this crappy budget that you have, and um, but I you know, being here for 20 years now, uh, over 20 years, uh, it was started out as a joke. Uh, one day <laughs> we were like um, with my buddy Jason, who does who has the Fortune brand and the Fortune parties. We're like. We are lamenting the fact that, you know, for a while we had all these venues and all these places played house music and Thursday through Sunday you would, there's all these different venues and all over the town and especially downtown and slowly but surely that's uh, eroded or been diluted Yeah. and we kind of lost our scene. And then the younger generation, like we uh, discussed, they kind of like, oh, yeah, well, we're going to go do our party in the desert or the mountains or the Indian reservation, yeah, which is yeah. great. And yeah. kudos to them. That's a that's a great way to be punk rock and rebel against the establishment. It's like, you know, we'll do our own thing. Yeah. Which I'm all for. But we also were like, man, this is our town. Like, we're, I mean, like, n none of my, f you know, I got friends here who are, like, successful DJs that don't ever play in San Diego. Uh, you know, you yeah, s probably the same thing with you. And so, I played some, but, yeah. yeah, the majority has been out. Yeah, so know. we just wanted a place where we could do something fun that was low-key, you know. And we, I, I was, like, looking for a place in downtown San Diego right in the heart of the gas lamp, you know, where we could, like, actually have our place. And we did. We did. Had yeah. a two-plus-year run, and it was great. Oh, cool. And, and that was the me and my friends. Me and my friends. Yeah. What an awesome name, by yeah, the way. Yeah. Yeah. It took me like a few times to realize that yeah. your initials were the yeah. Yeah. Meyer and Eugene. So, play on that. But it was great because it was did, inclusive too. Yeah. Did one in Miami. Uh, a couple in Miami, and uh, uh, probably going to bring it back. Uh, you know, again, I have to get that that little spark and that yeah. will to to take it on. But I I, I 
talking to you, like this is great because I, I think I like your model much better of three or four a year yeah. as opposed to a monthly. I love the, the, the monthly thing that so many of my friends are like, dude, that was so great. We miss it because we had a place yeah. where we could all go and you could cruise in and, you know, yeah. blue jeans, T-shirt, whatever. Yeah. And it was a, a low key and it was an underground venue too, which was awesome. Yeah. Uh, the room was really cool. Oh, nice. Um, so kind of sad I never went to one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And but my, one of my goals was like, I, you know, like I wanted to be a little bit of genre bending. You know, I mm -hmm. wanted. I had friends who make indie dance. I have friends who make and play techno. Uh, I, I'd really wanted to get like you in there for a, a, a breaks night and just like, even if it's just seventy-five to a hundred of of our friends, yeah. they're like, oh hey, you know what? There's other things that are fun that you can dance to besides this little bubble that we've kind yeah. of you yeah. know this not even a bubble like a tunnel right of, uh, a of tunnel blinders yeah of yeah. where we are musically kind of in, yeah. in our little city right here yeah and it, you know it, it's it's just like anything yeah, and outside it, that people are like oh and be like no hey it's okay like we can all hold hands if it makes you well it's kind of nice to hear you say that yeah because i mean that's like that would be great if that's where we end up you yeah know? Uh, everybody faces some level of like expectation of what it's going to be, whether it's because of the label or the DJs on the lineup or whatever. But we've had, like I said, we've had at all the Juice Night Out parties, including the ones that have been um, like 50-50 deals with like a festival or something like that. I think we've done like six, six or so, something like that now. Um, yeah, they've been, you know, they've been um, mostly house and breaks, probably 60%. Four to the floor. I'm not gonna. I don't want to offend yeah. any house people. Right. You know, but but non breaks. Right. Let's call it. And then um, we had one where we had a person close out with drum and bass, which everyone loved. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. You know? And that made sense because it was a daytime festival section. We oh, had nice. for about. They gave us like five hours, I think. Oh. Of a of a festival stage, and so yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, and 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 so it was and a lot more fun too, though. To right. be honest, man. Like, and like I don't know about you, but we found. Aside from exhausting maybe a core group that we actually knew, and they just can't go every month or whatever right. anyway. Um, like we found, we were putting as much effort into throwing any size party. Yeah. Right? As we would. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, like as far as reaching out to people. Yeah. You know, whatever methods we were using to promote right. the party, we were doing it whether it was a small one, room one, or a, a, one a month or in small or a larger venue with oh, a lot yeah. more emphasis. So we're like, dude, this makes no sense. Like, this, you know, we're gonna burn ourselves out. Yeah. And start to hate it or something. Yeah. The party throwing part. You know? Yeah. No, you get to the point where you're just like, oh man, I, I, I don't want to. I don't really want to do this. I don't want to <laughs> I mean, be I, here. I think both of what both of us are chatting about. I mean, uh, you know, I know some people listen now and some later, but I think it's if they latch onto it, hopefully. I mean, I just think it's a good idea to like pull back a little. Yeah. You know. I mean, I understand, and we're talking you know pretty much house music electronic dance music style yeah. parties you know yeah. I, I understand if you're in the open format biz or something like that it's a whole different ball game yeah like your your venue's probably paying you 500 bucks or whatever it is to to do your four or five hours every friday saturday built they're doing in, all the promotion crowd, probably yeah or maybe you get an extra kick if you do do yeah. the comp codes what you know that's different that's right. a different no um, we're talking more party. curated yeah, specific yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, but if yeah, if you're if you're curating the music that if the promoter is curating the music that they want to be played, kind of party. Yeah, you know, yeah. type thing. Um, yeah, I think it's a, I think it's just a great thing for anyone to think about. Yeah, sometimes less <laughs> can be more. And like, and dude, like I'm about to be forty eight, so yeah. like you know, I don't my friends. <laughs> <laughs> not yeah, you're, you know, you're, you're yeah, gonna tap them out once yeah, a year, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, like seriously, when they show up, I'm shocked. I'm like, wait, what are you doing here? Like, you, you, yeah, you sure you're supposed to be out this, like at this time of the night? And uh, yeah, nobody's more shocked than I am. But uh, you know, Brian Porterfield, yeah, he jumped so, in and said, yeah. "What's up?" Hey, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, but yeah, so I, I want to bring it back, and I want to do some daytime stuff too, and. Uh, I think one thing that we haven't really utilized, and a couple of people have done it, but th there's, there's there's such a cool city with so many great outdoor spaces, and I know this city is hard to work with, Very. and it's hard to get permits. That's why I stopped doing them. But I want to find that one 
person who has the in with the city. So if you're listening, hit me up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and who's like, you know, here's our, our goal. Like, it doesn't have to be on, on any level of, like, what, for example, Cross or something. But there's some really cool locations and spots where you can do, like, amazing outdoor parties and like i see some of these yeah if you could just get parties. the permit yeah like like the the group circle c-e-r-c-l-e uh-huh. or c-c-l-e yeah, yeah. or whatever i think they're out of ob aren't they uh no this one i'm talking about Different. is uh, a european one mm-hmm. yeah. and they're going to all these cool outdoor spots and just like you know yeah. we're san diego we're the home of you know 70 degrees great weather and you know cool vistas and and, and views and um so that I, if that, that's kind of where my head is right now. Like, how do we do this and, and do it legally? Or am I going to yeah. go old school and just throw out a generator? For yeah, three hours, yeah, yeah. Have it on wheels. Which and then, you can get away with some places. Yeah. You know, like, I've seen people throw a bunch of, uh, they get a permit, but it's pretty much renegade at, like, Cesar Chavez Park. Yeah, um, Chavez I Park. There's a pier over there. The pier. Yeah. It was actually set up out there. And that was nice. And bigger space than I thought it was at, Originally, and then sometimes on the park. park. Yeah, I think, Jim, done there. I think Jimbo from Love Life did one out there, and a couple of other people have done. So that's cool, and, that, and that's great. But uh, that's just been kind of my goal. It's like, man, dude, we live in San Diego. Like, uh, it would be really sweet if we could have a little more like legislation flexibility on that. Because <laughs> the because the because uh, the requirement to have battery powered sixty five dB kids. speakers doesn't <laughs> work. <laughs> no, it's like what mm. I gotta I can run a party off D battery powered <laughs> speakers. What? When I first when I ran into that, I was like, this is not gonna work. Yeah, dude. I'm going back to the clubs. Yeah, it's 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 yeah. it's it's a pretty regressive. Uh, city it's that or you have to haul out to the desert but that's yeah. not the same thing you're it's talking about it's not the about. same thing you know, same I want to do it in the experience. city uh, you know on one of the many bluffs we have overlooking yeah. the ocean yeah. um, but I do have a couple of ideas for cool. uh, some, some renegade renegade style yeah. parties um, but uh, yeah there, it's just um, it, it's a lot of work but uh, I, I want to do something again where and, and it's hard but yeah, you can expose some people to some different genres, you know. Yeah. But uh, sometimes you have to do a little bit of arm twisting to get people to take a chance on, <laughs> on something that's, you know, outside their comfort zone. And, yeah, sometimes uh, even for just one song. <laughs> 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 you, so you, true. You go for that little yeah. uh, variety in the middle of your set, and you're yeah. like, oh. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't I, have done oh, that. Sorry about that, everybody, but not really. Well, dude, I got to ask you about some of these pictures because oh, we went boy. to the trouble to look at some of them, but I'm going to throw some of them up here. And uh, there's absolutely no format to this show, okay. but I'm still going to throw some of these I, up there and be like, the what's one that I'm one? looking at right now uh, is I'm hands on up a, on a boat. I'm on a boat. So here's a good story. I had been playing on another boat during that during the day right and my manager at the time had me on this boat at night and again this is way back when you carrying a book i had a book of cds oh okay so i wasn't records but it was cds well i proceeded to have a really good time at the day party okay and then they sent a a a water taxi for me (laughs) i i I, I get off i get off the boat and i go into there's a i think it was anthony's fish grotto or something there okay and I change and put on jeans, got my backpack, everything. Right. And then I go and I jump on the other boat. They have an opener and he's playing and it's time for me. And it was this guy who had <laughs> booked me and rented out the boat for his birthday. Like it was his birthday. That's awesome. And so I go up there and I go to open my backpack and I'm like, ah, I'm pulling out clothes and headphones and dirty socks and stuff. And, um, because the night before, I'd actually played in San Francisco. And I'm like, man, where's my my booklet of CDs? Like, I'm not finding this anywhere. And so I'm in a full panic mode. And I'm like, tell the DJ, hey, come on, a couple more. Like, let's go. And I'm looking. And like, I mean, there's nowhere for me else to look on this boat. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, what is going on? Like, I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. And so I called the people on the other boat, and they're like, no, man, like, uh, your, your stuff is gone. There's no, like, it's a big booklet of CDs. Yeah. So I'm like, what do I do? And so, oh, my gosh, I changed clothes at this Anthony's Fish Grotto right. there, called them. They're like, I don't know. And I'm like, 
can you just like send somebody look like this is really important yeah went to the bathroom I'm like yeah mr miller your uh book of cds yeah your book of cds is, is here. here and so i'm like oh my gosh so this is all going on i would already told the guy like hey man i don't know him he's like oh, well what's going on and this so, DJ's already playing like you're supposed to be switching. Oh, yeah. So he's this is like now he's 20 minutes uh, oh, overboard. He's stressed. And I'm telling the guy who had booked me his birthday. And, and I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry. He's like, well, what, what's the deal? And I said, hey, man, I screwed up. Like, I left my... He's like, well, can we go get him? And I was like, I don't know. He's like, dude, we'll turn this boat around. I booked you. It's my birthday. Because you're on the boat. <laughs> so he turns the boat around. I call them back. And I'm like... It's about probably, uh, I don't know, a quarter of a mile, half a mile. Right. I'm like, hey, is there somebody I can talk to? And finally, I got some hostess. I was like, hey, can you get a bus guy for me? And she's like, yeah, I guess so. And I said, <laughs> hey, dude, listen, here's where we're coming in. Like, I got like 34 bucks in cash on me. Like, if you run that you book down. You tip the bus boy to bring your book of CDs <laughs> down the beer, dude. Long story short. He comes running down, and I jump off and run and try and meet him halfway, turn yeah. around, jump on, just get on the boat and start playing. And he comes up wow. to me, he's like, dude, the captain's, like, super cool, but he said there's not much point in going back out, so okay. he's going to sit Stay here for, like, party. the next an hour and just party if you... Awesome. And I was like, okay, like, I'm really sorry. He's like, it's good, man. That's it's an awesome good. story for that photo. So, Yeah. Now I just use, now I just lose USBs. It's not quite as traumatic as losing your book of yeah, CDs. Yeah, you usually have a second one. Usually, <laughs> usually. What uh, this one's up next? What's going on um, here? So this is a Euro Beard show um, with Scooter and I playing at the Roosevelt in Hollywood. Oh, right on. Um, for a fortune party, and the guy right there, we actually. Was that the Fortune Four Two One? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. remember going to a few of their parties. Yeah. At, um, I think they did them at Hard Rock or something. For they a while, did right? some. They've done some all over okay. Hard Rock, several pools, and then they did a, a series. Um, and we played one of theirs in, at the Roosevelt. And the guy there is uh, actually we had our saxophone player come and play with us because we had recorded them on a couple of our tracks. Oh, okay. So uh -huh. we brought him out there that day. It was a fun party. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, what do, those still guys? Those guys still do parties, or what's the um, it's, it's it's a guy named Jason Herrick. He's not doing parties mm -hmm. anymore. He's just focusing on his uh, clothing brand. They had a pretty good following, man. Right? Really like, good following. Just the best the reputation, yeah. you know, for a good crowd, yeah. fun, dancey house music, and yeah. yeah. It was and punchy though. Yeah. yeah, it was like a nice, yeah. especially. The, yeah. I, I always went to the pool ones at the Hard Rock. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, that was like my go-to daytime spot. I would take someone that wanted to nice. do daytime house music. Yeah. 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 But I guess now maybe they, I guess because, I don't remember at the time, but now it's was certainly more There was an intervention. That probably was an intervention. I don't know. I don't yeah. remember the name of the party. But now I know they've got that whole area open on top of Hard Rock. This is bigger parties. That's maybe. where intervention I used see. to be, and that was a huge No, it wasn't, it wasn't that like space. Sunday it was strictly the party pool, kind of a crazy. narrow space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, by that was probably pool. some of them. Mm -hmm. Great view, though. Yeah. It was awesome. What, yeah. uh, what's this one going on? This one is... Oh, that's a festival that... Uh, again, looks big. Yeah, again, that was Eurobeard um, with Scooter and I. And, um, yeah, and in fact, uh, we just played a bunch of old... I played a bunch of old funky straight-up house, and Scooter is an amazing turntablist. Oh, wow. I mean, he, he's... He's uh, still around? Oh, yeah, he, cool. he, he's still... he's. He works five, six days a week. He's national, oh, wow. national touring. Awesome. But he's an amazing turntablist, hip hop DJ. He's a good house DJ too. But he, you know, he's his, made his, his name thing, and his known. Name yeah, is turntablism and, and so it was great. And well, he's really half of half of yeah, yeah, whatever that means. He was half of Lavelle and Scooter, which I'm sure you probably heard of. It Lavelle. sounded familiar to me, yeah. but like Scooter's kind of a fun name to say. Yeah, so I, I, I <laughs> don't want to assume anything. So it was great. So I would play. Uh, I get to play a house song, and I would just maybe drop a note to him, like say, "Hey, this," and and, and he would drop acapella, scratch, do all kinds of cool, creative stuff, and uh, super fun to play with. And I'm not a get on the microphone guy at yeah. all. And he is just like he will have people like doing handstands and on each other's shoulders yeah. and 
uh, chicken fighting. He's just really good. At it's that. funny you said that because I'm not a mic guy either, but I do, but I'll speak to the crowd and I like to. It always pisses off the promoter if I I'll just turn down the volume to zero <laughs> and say what I gotta say to the to people right in right, front of me, right. and then usually I've it's like a too. wave effect going right. towards the back when they <laughs> like what I said or whatever. That's what I like to do. That's and awesome. There's always a gap in the audio recording. <laughs> <laughs> Several. I do it two or three times. Uh, that's yeah. funny. I like to do it. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm pretty rare on the mic at once, and then I'm like, wow, I'm awkward. <laughs> so yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, as soon as I do it, I'm like, that's why I don't ever get on the mic. <laughs> what about this one? This is a couple of dudes hanging out. Looks um, like San Diego. Is that San Diego? I think that is San Diego. I think that is backstage at the same or no, it's a different festival. But that's just, uh, yeah, that was getting ready to play, hanging out. Oh, that's uh, Who and Paolo De Rosso. They're also on the Sleeping Giant, uh, same agency. And it's, they have an interesting act where he kind of plays like hip-hop and open format, but Paolo plays a lot of guitar while he's uh, DJing, and Paolo's a great uh, guitarist and they'll do like acoustic oh, cool. stuff and then sometimes they'll just do it l- kind of live on the fly right. with an acapella and um yeah they're fun well it sounds that's like you've fun. got you've got obviously some ties into and maybe it's through the agency stuff which we really didn't talk about but obviously you're you're not only into music but around others that are absolutely absolutely some got professionally it. doing it and some, yeah you know hobbyists or whatever i yeah. guess as well what uh let's see this one. Oh my goodness that looks <laughs> like me on a good one and i <laughs> I'm not real sure where it is. I can tell you that those, I own my last pair of headphones right there. So it's probably a Sunday. <laughs> so you know it's like, it's sometime. <laughs> it's probably a Sunday. All right, uh, we'll float by. Maybe it, yeah. maybe it was the same day as this one with yeah, everyone wearing is, dark glasses. <laughs> that is Lavelle. He's one of my best friends. One awesome. of the reasons I got into DJing. Um, and that is us on the terrace during winter music conference mm. at Space. Mm-hmm. And I think that was back then. When, I mean, it still is, but that, there was a time period there I felt like the early mid aughts, uh-huh. where that you know Saturday and Sunday morning of like winter Miami music, music conference, conference time, yeah, yeah. W- w- WMC, yeah. that the terrace was kind of hollowed ground, yeah. and the, you were lucky. And that's when Sander Kleinenberg was oh, really on wow. fire. Yeah, and yeah. That might have been the day he played like an eight-hour set. At space. At space on the terrace. I might have been there. Yeah, uh, yeah, right. And then there, there's, you know, that's when Roger Sanchez was yeah. really big, and he would get like, and, and these guys would come and out. You'd get a Danny Tenaglia occasionally. Yeah, or like Tony you know, and, and, yeah, and, and these guys would come out, and I got a chance to talk to him a couple of about it because it was really interesting. I'm like, yeah. and like Sander mentioned, he's like, yeah, I save tracks for this particular day and set all huh. year long. Wow. And uh, very cool. Yeah, yeah. What uh, I meant, you've mentioned the agency a couple of times. What's the what's the story with that? What's the Sleeping Giant? Um, Sleeping Giant Music is the name of the agency. Yeah. Um, they're a local agency, and um, they are just uh, it's two guys. Freddie uh, was one of the, the starters of it, and um, Freddie Arb, and okay. then Troy Gilmore came over from Blue Moon, I believe it was um, agency, and they combined forces. And they have really taken off in the past three or four years, and it's wow. grown exponentially. They have an office in Miami now. What's their? F- they have a focus, or um, they have. Uh, it, it's 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 mostly uh, um, house music, but they do have some open format and a couple of rappers. I think this uh, is them. This is them right there. And cool. uh, like if you click on their artists, like they have a lot of great artists. They just got Robbie Rivera. Oh, I love some right. Robbie Rivera stuff. Can, um, but it's a great. People used to give me shit because he's got a record label called Juicy, Juicy or something. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, Nah, dude. I'm sorry, but mine predates his. <laughs> <laughs> we, they may be more popular, yeah, and right. I may even like a lot of his music more right. than some of ours, but yeah. including my own. But I said, Nope, sorry about that, he, bro. He's been doing it a lot, and there you can see. Obviously, it's just an album, but it's got some legends on there, and um, yeah, some younger guys, and uh, just played with. A, the Coco Drills are great if you like uh, techno. JJ Flores, what's up, JJ? Awesome. Yeah, I published the link in the thing too. Um, you can see it now. And, later. and they are. I mean, there's it's, you. Yeah, there's me, and it's just it's family, man. I know it sounds cheesy or cliche, but it's scribble. 
it's uh, really cool the way uh, they take care of you. Um, their platform is amazing. Awesome. Um, like, even for a, 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 a jackass like me, like you, <laughs> you it, they make it so easy for you to have everything at your disposal to make sure that like, if you can't hand if you can't like handle your business and just right. when everything is taken care of you literally everything is like all you got to do is walk from the car to the stage like right and, and then play like donald, and, um, God, Daru. donald yeah nice. yeah um well, so it's a awesome. combination do you, of some do you work old, for them or no they uh, just rep, they rep, they just rep they me rep okay. and um yeah but it's it's uh it's great it's family they uh the camaraderie is really cool Cool. Uh, all the guys hang out like when we're at like even just you know when we all are doing shows together in Miami for WMC and stuff and it's just a big gang of us but like the nicest funnest and these guys loving. were from here originally uh, or originally yeah. yeah oh wow from here yeah Sh- you got you know this guy Sheldon Dyer he's like what's up yeah I sure do <laughs> long right. time no see Sheldon wow nice man yeah um, so yeah it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a good it's a good agency um, like I said, the most important thing to me, is it's very familial, um, and we have a good time, you know, and they take good care of their artists. They That's really cool. do. Like, I guess they do management and agency stuff. Just agency, just right? Agency. Just agency yeah. right now. I guess California law, you can't do. Oh, both. really? Yeah. That I didn't know. Yeah. But yeah. I just figured because they're such different businesses. Yeah. Really? You know, because yeah. I know like a few people I've worked with for remixes and stuff like that were under like red light management from LA they, they seem they're pretty they're okay. massive yeah you know but they're strictly yeah. management yeah so I never really knew why that's it yeah. that's it it's all those cats have different agents right yeah it's okay. probably not a bad thing yeah legally like I maybe hard to understand for like a a music fan right probably not a bad idea to have the agent and the manager separate, separate companies yeah absolutely <laughs> especially yeah. if they're making lots of money right which is usually the well it's certainly the case if you are making lots of money, you probably almost definitely have an agent and manager. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not so, to say that you're always making money if you have one, but right. if you are making a ton of money like Daft Punk, def- Devil, Diplo, yeah. whatever, you probably have someone. Absolutely. So like having the same hand in both cookie jars is probably exactly. not the best not idea. Not the best idea. It's not the best idea for the artist. Not, you know, yeah, like given, given so the reputation of come the from business in general. Don't have great business backgrounds. Right, artists. absolutely, <laughs> so. absolutely. Yeah, it would just make it super easy to have no check and balance. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. So yeah, that's that's, that's my agency, and uh, they're great. Take are you? What are you doing now? Well, I know music production wise, that's awesome and stuff you get into on the DJ side. Are you just playing gigs around? Just playing gigs, time, and no, gigs not around. Parties, so. um, not throwing parties. Um, uh, Do you like saying, that better? I mean, is that like a relief? You know, it's uh, it's interesting because. There's so much more work, obviously, into throwing a party, you know, and um, but there's also a certain amount of satisfaction when it comes together and it's successful and, you know, you have a lot of fun. And for me, and probably similar to you, like you get to play with a couple of your friends or people you respect and love. Like you put together the lineup and kind of curated everything. So that's super fun. But it's also a lot of work. Um, but it's just, it's, a, it's, you know, it's great getting to hang out and play with your friends instead of, you know, being somewhere and being by yourself or with people you don't know super well. Yeah. But, um, yeah, um, it is a relief sometimes to just, after you throw show a party up, for a couple of years, up, I'm like. play, get paid, leave. Yeah, <laughs> like show up, play, like have a beer afterwards with the promoter or the yeah. owner. and Listen to their problems. Yeah, and you're just like, oh, yeah, I, I, I want to go back oh, to my room that's now. great, so yeah. I'm going to go get a taco. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know. Call it a night. Yeah. And, I'm, you know, I really hope your party does well or continues <laughs> yeah. to do well. Yeah. You know, I yeah. would love to come back and play it. Yeah, you know, that's awesome. But uh, yeah, it's. Um, it, What's been your favorite place to play, city or, or venue? I, well, I always love I always love Miami because uh, just the energy that and, and mostly probably because I, I I'm most of the time I play down there. It's you know, it's it's during the music conference and yeah. we. But just something about like so many people and house heads just all being yeah. in there and that energy and that vibe 
and the fact that you know it's a bunch of Europeans too and 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 uh, usually it's been my experience that they're less concerned with how they look or acting and they're there to have fun and to dance yeah there's a pretty heady like vibe there yeah yeah and um, you know it, it it's fun like granted there's gonna be a couple of places you know that are maybe a little music snobbery we yeah. you know but most of it no it's just people that are there to to dance and to have fun and you know i feel like san time. francisco is probably as close to that as i found san on the west coast it's great it's just it's the man best. you go it, there's just always like a broad range of styles of people gender age yeah and if they bothered to come in the place they're just they dance and they're yeah. hugs and smile. I mean that's been my experience. Yeah, no, San Francisco. So is if that's great sheltered, then I'm I'm glad that's been my experience. Yeah. But but it's just cool like that. No, it yeah. is like San Francisco has been one of my. <clears throat> it's not only one of my favorite cities, um, just because it's so. I don't know. It's cosmopolitan. Yeah. You can get an amazing meal at yeah. midnight or one in the yeah. morning. You know, yeah. you're not. Yeah relegated i don't want to say relegated because i was going to say tacos and you're never <laughs> relegated to tacos tacos are right always a privilege never that's never. always a privilege yeah, it's always you a, a good privilege. taco yeah but sometimes you like to have options and they actually just don't have the greatest tacos there that's the problem yeah that'd be a problem yeah, and just, it's a little chilly that's there that's one thing we've got cold. on yeah. yeah um but yeah san francisco and i mean they're just and, and they're you know at the risk of, of, of sounding um, a little cheesy. I just think they're 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 they're, they're pretty musically educated, you know, oh, especially with house music, you know. Oh, big time! Um, and, yeah. Uh, and there's this cool, great venues, eclectic places that play great after hours. I play yeah. there. There's um, definitely the after hours, both in Oakland too. Yeah. You know, like, I haven't done that good, yet. I've been a couple of there some different times and and stuff. Yeah, and San Francisco is probably one of the only places I've been where people have come up to me who didn't know who I was when I played the party, but researched it right. before. Like, I've been like, you know, it's, it's not like all the time, but it, but each time I've been there, there's always somebody who's like, oh, so, you know, and we kept seeing this flyer of N.O. Week, or a friend told me about it, and I went and, you know, Googled you, which, yeah. as easy as that sounds it is to do, like, people don't. People don't. And it's like, and I listened to, you know, like, your latest release on Spotify, I really dig that, you know, and Isn't it's like, awesome? you're going, what? Yeah. Like who bought like who spends 10 minutes like researching like the people <laughs> on the flyer, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that, no, and that's that's well said. That, that I, I feel that kind of sums up a lot of yeah. the San Francisco. They're educated, they care. Yeah. You know, that's exactly they, what that is. is they is, understand is a desire to kind of know what's understand what's going on. Yeah, and know? I think they understand and respect their San Francisco's place and the linchpin of where house music cities are such a deep history yeah and you know yeah. obviously detroit and chicago but then san francisco you know and with the the own recordings and all, oh, all so that, many good things dude, have come out yeah. of there even back to like uh, that and hard kiss and all that yeah thing. yeah just, you know so san, san francisco is great and it's just a fun city is, is uh is mark farina out of there or no mark farina is. is out of okay. there yeah which makes a lot of sense miguel miggs yeah. and you know yeah Oh I always, man! I always tell the people. I always tell the kids. <laughs> we're gonna have to have a whole like uh, I don't know. Like we're gonna have to have a whole another episode where we just go city by city, <laughs> city and by dig city, into the right? history that we know. Yeah. And, and then get on the Googles and yeah. try to that be like, super fact fun. check ourselves. That'd be super. That's what I. It tell, would be cool. I tell my my my, my friends who are like in their twenties. I'm like, hey, girls, like mix in five or ten minutes of research. Like it, yeah, it's it would not, be cool. not a bad thing. Like and like find out and understand where the history of this comes from or, or you know why you like this music and how it got to this place and then you know like maybe check out some other things yeah. that are, you know maybe a little different I might do it like uh, I'm traveling a lot but um, I might do it I've been thinking about doing I really enjoy the one on one format mm -hmm. that's really my favorite and yeah. I'm always excited when I've got someone who's going to do it and then after it just I don't know it stays with me yeah it's very for me it's as as personal as I think I get with the music business. Yeah. You know, um, so, which I, so I appreciate that we could do it. Um, but I have, I've tinkered with, because there's a couple of different people I'd like to collaborate with um, for this kind of thing where we could, um, and because I got my mic stuff working now where it's not 
uh, you don't have to have multiple mics for everybody. This mic's fantastic. I, I was, this blue microphone, I dude. I love that thing. You know, I had to step it up. I tried this white one. People can't see it. This one died on me. I had I had multiples of these, and then uh -huh. it died on me with my show with Eric Diaz. I felt terrible because all kinds of reverb and echo and shit. And anyway, we had a we did the show, but it was you know it wasn't it wasn't that awesome for people yeah. later on the replay because of the well, issues. This is there. great. We don't have to wear. But this is fantastic. You know. And yeah, like, and this thing works awesome. The only issue I had with it uh, at first was you get it's so sensitive and good that it picks up even the fan noise off this laptop. Really? Yeah, like if you're real quiet for a second. You can hear that. And even just a little ambient from the AC right. unit in the building, whatever. But after a little while, which is, I'm telling you this because I'm psyched and because you produce stuff too. Um, I do all my after editing uh, for anything, which is light, but I do it mm -hmm. in, um, in Premiere. Okay. Uh, Adobe Premiere for right. uh, the video editing you know, workstation. And um, there's a company called Crumple Pop that makes a couple plugins for like, uh, I will call it one button audio treatment so you don't have to get all into like surgical EQ and right. shit like I was trying to do in Ableton. Yeah. You know? Just and anyway, they make a few things but they're dialed in for these problems for like podcasting and sort of presets nice. for it. Dude, I threw that thing on the audio track. Just like all I did basically was, you know, I did a simple master EQ limiter compression thing for the audio yeah. portion of it to just get it normalized or, you know, loud, loud enough or normal and, uh, and then I pop that back in here and threw that filter on it that fan noise gone wow i was blown away because i read tons Crumple. of tutorials about how to extract you know uh like fan noise and stuff like because i'd never really dealt with that until i did the podcast right you know oh, dealt with all so, kinds yeah. of other noises <laughs> but you know crackles <laughs> right and pops and voices yeah. s's and that shit but you know and there's tons of that in ableton but there wasn't anything that was just like yeah like drag this sausage fattener on there and it'll just get rid of all <laughs> fan noise Without sacrificing the audio, well, that's like awesome. the vocal stuff. I was like, this is amazing. So anyway, aside from my excitement about that, a little shout out to Crumple Pop. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> and I hopefully that know. helps somebody else. Um, uh, because of that now, not needing headsets, whatever, yeah. I can kind of just have three or four people sit around, you know, maybe a little smaller stool or something. But I think it would be fun to do a, uh, you know, like a, the city type discussion or right. some other musical uh category discussions with a little bit of a round table yeah no that'd be fascinating yeah. so i'm I, glad you mentioned it because it doesn't yeah. it won't kill the idea yet. yeah 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 <laughs> and it'd just be great because i i think people you know have an interest in it um they might not necessarily you know want to take the time to do the research themselves and yeah what, where, what better way than to hear about it from you know some old awesome. dudes, old dudes sitting around? There. Well, I may hit you up sometime and uh, reach out and see like you know if you know what people you think might know yeah. you know, some concentrated areas, maybe they've yeah. toured there or lived there or whatever. Yeah, and I think that'd be really neat. Absolutely, yeah, uh, that'd be cool. that'd be super fun. Great Man. way to catch up on the history of some different cities, and different places. Yeah. Yeah, that and like a, 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 you know, sort of a movement one, I think would be a lot of fun. Like musical movements, like within oh, the electronic yeah. dance scenes. Yeah. You know, like just people that really know, like maybe the players in a particular thing or might have played with them or had stories from yeah. some days or, you know. Yeah, and absolutely. modern too is cool. Yeah. You know, the dubstep era, fine with me. Right. You know, we don't have right. to listen to it for four hours. <laughs> we don't have to, I don't want to listen to anything for four hours, dude. No, right? Yeah. Right? No, that's, that's yeah. interesting you say that because I'm the same way. Like I... Uh, I don't see how some of these uh, maybe I did it too but like um, yeah I hear the same thing for like two three hours I'm like dude you switch it up for me or do a little something like anything yeah. you know yeah um, um, I've been appreciating some I can't think of any off the top of my head but there's some DJs who have been you know taking chances and who will like throw something just goofy in the middle of yeah. it, like a George Michael or Wham song right, or something, right. you know, and not maybe not not even the remix, just... Like the, the one remaining song yeah. you can't find an edit of? <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Because they're all out there, yeah. man. Just dig hard yeah. enough, you can find them. Yeah. Yeah. There's an edit of everything. Everything. Man. And they'll just play the straight-up original, and you're like, oh, wow, that's fun, and it's a breath of fresh air, and, you know, and it's not that serious. Yeah. Uh, I played... Uh, uh, Le Chic Freak Out at oh, the nice. festival in Canada. Nice. The original. The original. Just straight up between two two tracks. And it was just hilarious. Man. Yeah. Like, 
is, is like people weren't sure if the DJ changed or what <laughs> happened, and then they thought it because I I'll I'll play like three or four of my own edits of stuff too, right? And I think they thought like something like that was gonna happen and never did. <laughs> and no, the and drop, I just let the whole thing no play. Yeah, nice. I let it play from the intro to the end. Love it. And when it ran out, I pressed play on the next <laughs> song. Just let the whole thing groove. <laughs> I was like, there's nothing I can do to make that song better, so I'm just going to let it roll. That, that's actually you know? good for me to hear, because sometimes I'll yeah. try to do a wonky, wanky mix out of something that, yeah, yeah. I can just filter it out. And too many something. people play Bob Marley songs, so I was right. like, which I love, but I was like, I can't do that. No. <laughs> what kind of festival was it? There's a festival called uh, Electric Love Music Festival oh, cool. up in outside Vancouver. They were That was their fourth year. Uh, I think the fifth one will be the next, will be fifth year. Yeah. That must be beautiful really cool. out there. Yeah, it's like, uh, I think maybe 5,000, 6,000 people. Wow. So not too crazy yet, but Still super growing. fun, yeah. And Canada's just awesome. It's a whole, it's, All my you know, we don't, I don't live there, so of course it's awesome, but right. it's like, it's the vibe's nice. <laughs> it's there a refreshing the, vibe. You're there during the spring or summer when it's... Yeah, like, like it's always in uh, end of August, like right around Burning Man time. Oh, like nice. In August time frame. Yeah, That's they've great. got it. There's a holiday. I don't know what it's called, but there's a Canadian holiday uh, somewhere in there that uh, they have that's not something we have and uh, they do it on that weekend cool yeah good stuff man there's some good vibes up there that's what see Vancouver's one of the things we can talk one of the those yeah. areas we can talk about too yeah. much stuff dude yeah that's man we've been we've been rocking for like two and a half hours Myron really? Eugene. it wow. goes by quick doesn't it it does wow I gotta go to Mexico tomorrow man I gotta I'm sure you got stuff to do too I gotta I gotta wind it down and go mm -hmm. I don't know what I, I mean I got couple things i gotta get my driver's license i left it at oh, no. fedex this morning uh, <laughs> that's better than leaving it at a bar somewhere yeah definitely i know where it is and they're, and they're fairly responsible people so and it's not like yeah. way down in national city so right. it's a pretty yeah. quick run but yeah that and a friend of mine moved apartments i'm gonna go check out her place and see nice. what's going on over there we'll have fun in mexico too. um i have uh I have a couple, little bit of music. I have a couple gigs this weekend. Awesome. Um, celebrating my birthday, so Heck that's yeah. coming up tomorrow. I will actually be the big four eight. I know, Sweet, dude. Man. I know. Congrats. I know. Longevity, <laughs> health, longevity, health. Um, oh, You're not super jaded. Man? No, not at all, man. <laughs> that's awesome. I, 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 I love things like this. I love. Uh, talking to different people with different experiences. I like meeting some of the younger guys, the younger yeah. crews. I love getting to hang out with some of the older dudes. I get to hang out with like Donald sometimes oh, or yeah. Dan and like yeah. the, the shooting the shit yeah. with them and the stories. And yeah, I, no, I, there's I always enjoy a certain it. camaraderie there. Yeah, absolutely. A, just a vibe that, yeah. of experience or something. Yeah. So yeah, yeah that, that's it. A couple gigs this weekend. Then I'm off on my, my big hike, my big, my big trip. Where's that going to be again? It's called Havasupai Falls. It's a. Uh, it's an. It's actually an offshoot of the Grand Canyon. And if I understand, like near Lake Havasu. Um, the name's not Havas Havasupai. Oh, Havasupai. Ha Havasupai. Yeah, and it's an, uh, an, an Indian tribe that's okay. had this forever. Okay. And um, it's really hard to get a reservation. They only let in a certain amount of campers right. uh, per year. So I've been. This is my third idea. year. Yeah. Right. My third yeah, year to try right. to get in. And oh, okay. After three and a half hours of just hitting the refresh <laughs> on the queue. <laughs> And people it's are worse like, than Burning Man. Oh, yeah. People are like, oh, my God, this website, terrible, man. I'm like, dude, there's like 106 life, people in this Indian tribe. Yeah. And, like, we're lucky enough. And so these falls are amazing. And wow. because of the mineral in the water, it's just crystal green. But you got in this time. I got in. So awesome. I'm going. And, um, but, yeah, I got like a 10-mile hike at the trailhead. Then you have to hike down into the canyon. So What kind of, you know, what kind of elevation it is? Totally. I'm not sure what the elevation is. I do know I, I hired a burrow. Awesome. So I have a pack oh, this animal. Is sounding even more awesome. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, you're down in there and you camp. And you can do day hikes because there's like three or four crazy waterfalls yeah. uh, in, in this oh, canyon. Oh, you, you got I know you'll have pictures and stuff. You're going to have yeah. to come back. And um, a lot of times, well, most everyone I have on here has been that I've met through music. And then sometimes they've either come back or we were just like, why talk about music? Because we both run marathons. So let's just talk about that for <laughs> right. two hours. And we did. Right. Like, people are just like, what in that world is going on? <laughs> like, I don't even know these people. And, and, and you know, you get yeah. lost in that and, and explaining marathoning. But uh, yeah. awesome to hear about that, too. Yeah. No, I'm excited. 
Yeah. My knees are not excited, but I, I'm excited. It'll be fun. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome, yeah. dude. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Cool, man. Yeah. Well, anything else? Like, maybe real, I don't know, I, I posted links to uh, your SoundCloud was... Uh, yeah, SoundCloud. You can follow me on the usual spots, Twitter, it's Instagram. It's pretty much your name, Myron Eugene on SoundCloud. Myron Eugene at SoundCloud, Twitter, Instagram, if anybody All wants. Of it. Uh, we talked and I'll post those in the I do like yeah. a little page after you've okay. seen and I'll post all those links there yeah um, awesome. I'm around this weekend San Diego I'm at the Sikawan I need to double check this I'm at a pool party on Saturday <laughs> 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 sleeping giant where you at and, uh, and then uh, Sunday I'm right here in PB sweet at the uh, firehouse so. oh nice yeah. roof I assume yeah roof yeah. Um, so Very I'll be cool. doing a little. If I was here, I'd go. Yeah, check it out. Yeah, it's it gets nuts up there. It's it a, does. It's, it's a fun Sunday. It's a fun party. time. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, kids. Yeah, is that Jimbo's it. thing or? No, no, it's uh not through. It's not Jimbo's thing. But he uh his parties up there have been I think really. This is fun on Friday, Friday, right? He does a once a month on a. F no, I'm sorry, a weekly on Friday. Friday yeah. And then he's been, been that a bunch. Soul yeah, set. Soul set, and uh, I played that with him. It's super fun. And then he's doing some. Once a month or every six weeks, uh, a Sunday party there. I can't remember the name of it, but I went to one and it was really fun. It's more of like on the deep house tip, you okay. know? Yeah, but yeah. I'd super groovy and good crowd and it's just a great venue, you know? Awesome. Well, if someone's looking for something to do in the next two weeks that's yeah. less club oriented, go yeah. to Genius Loki. You yes, know that festival. It's I awesome. am going to Genius and you're gonna Loki. Go. Yeah, I I've Fantastic. only been once. I went. Uh, I just got for one day, and uh, Henry was nice enough to take care of me. Very cool. And so, yeah, I'm excited to do that. Yeah, it's uh, as my parting thought and shout out for the for the for the homies there. It's yeah. June 20th to 24th. Yeah, just the website is genius, like genius, and then Loki L O C I fest yeah it's oh. amazing yeah. beautiful it, i love mexico more than anything i love surfing and i like music and i'm terrible at yoga but i, I don't know if they do yoga there <laughs> we didn't even get into surfing yeah <laughs> that's awesome dude. we, to go we surf gotta surf sometime. sometime i'm going down to spend six weeks in puerto escondido oh good for you <laughs> yeah dude good i was already there for five weeks earlier in the year Wow. That was my first time ever there, and I was just blown away, man. I was always yeah. afraid that that wave was... Um, it's a gnarly head. Well, I, di I didn't surf the main break at Zicatella, because, and that's why partly why I never went was because I was always just like, ah, oh, that's too gnarly, too big. Yeah. It's all you ever read or see. Right. And then uh, my good friend's living in Guadalajara, so I was there, and I was like, uh, he said the same thing. He's not a surfer. But I was like, shoot, I'm going to go down there. I was studying Spanish, taking lessons Good and stuff. And there was this language school there. So I was like, and they also did surf stuff. So I was like, let me go down there. And it was funny because I had called them and was like, hey, like, like all I've ever seen is this nasty, like, beach break <laughs> wave there. Like, the back break you guys break. are, like, anywhere from beginners to pro. You yeah. you have it, right? And they're like, oh, yeah, don't worry. We know There's all the breaks around. There's other breaks, yeah. Went down there, man. It was dude, like good for point you. breaks all day, dude. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, just lefts and rights, and they can they know where they are, and they take you out there. Some are really close local. Some are like uh, day trips. That's and dude, that's I wrote great. some I wrote some rights and lefts that were like, dude, they were thirty second, forty second. I mean, long. That's rides, awesome. Dude. That's like, great. So long. Like if you if you you know if you got the transitions across right. two three different segments, right, all the way into the beach, dude, on nice. good waves, you know, not yeah. not foam, yeah. and then um. You know, the stuff I was surfing was ranged from, like, anywhere from two feet to two meters. Oh, that's fun. Great, that's glassy, yeah. point break stuff, Shoulder, so it was nice and clean. Shoulder, head high. And, yep. Oh, and you just surf awesome. your ass off, and then you'd have to walk warm down the water. beach all the way back down. 80 degrees all the time, man. Dude, you can't beat warm Rash guard, water, Rash oh. guard, board shorts. You're, I'm, yeah, you're making me theme <laughs> Jones, <dude. laughs> I, uh, I haven't so, surfed. I had knee surgery in December, and I haven't surfed since. Yeah. Mostly, I mean, I'm okay to surf. I've just mostly yeah. been dreading putting on a wetsuit. And, yeah. And that first. That's paddles. part of always been my yeah. deterrent. It's yeah. part of why I've never really gotten better. You can make yeah. all kinds of excuses for everything. Of no, but I mean, you, you know, growing up probably in Florida and and, and yeah, I surfed a little there, but like here more, and I really learned out here. Yeah. But I'm kind of like I was pretty much, you know, I'm like beginner non-tourist longboarder you right. know like i could hold my own and you know find no, out here matter. but man and i went down there and like 
in those five weeks that like you're gonna get so got much twice better. as good. Yeah, just in that. So good I, for I was you, like, dude. Back, dude. We'll have to surf sometime yeah, here totally. when you get back. I go to Mexico all the time. I love it, man. Lo- I love it. I love it, dude. Viva so Mexico. glad we did this. Yeah, me too. Because uh, yeah, I mean, always learning some new stuff, but there's yeah. a lot of mutual stuff here that we can vibe Absolutely. on. Absolutely, for love sure. It. Anything else? Any other shout outs? Whatever before That's we're out it. of here. Uh, I think we're good, man. I appreciate yeah, the time. Thanks for inviting me and having me. Awesome. Super fun. Thanks for anyone that's uh, a couple people still left in there. Anyone jumped in the chat uh, later on, listen to it, all that good stuff. There were links in the chat, which won't be in the audio later, but I will post them to the website page at westmith.com or varietyshow.com. goes to the same place. You'll be able to check it out, Myron and Eugene's episode. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, awesome, guys. fun. Appreciate it, Wes. Appreciate it, my man. All right, dude. Awesome, dude. We're going to sign out of here. Stay yep. classy, yo. <laughs> <laughs>